So hey guys, how are you all? Welcome to Muse Fanfiction. So we are back with a brand new movie on what if Naruto got the flaming dragon slayer magic of King Igneo. But before we start, be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Now let's begin the story. A young boy at the age of 5 walking down one of the alleys in Konoha. This boy was Uzumaki Naruto, Jinchuriki of the Kayubi. The downcast expression he wore, suggested that something sad had happened. He wore black shinobi sandals, blue shorts and a yellow t-shirt with blue stripes. The clothes looked extremely old and worn out. Why did they kick me out of the orphanage? What did I do, to make them hate me? He questioned as he started crying. The world is cruel. He had been walking around for the past hour now, looking for a comfortable alley to sleep in. It was already 5 pm and he still hadn't found a suitable spot to sleep. He was nearing the village outskirts and saw a few different training grounds. Most of them had small forests so he went towards what he thought was training ground 7 and went to look for a place to sleep. After a few minutes, he found a big tree with a small hole inside. A part of the tree was hollow. Finding nothing better, the boy squeezed through the small opening which was extremely small. Actually being glad that he was malnutritioned for once, he looked around. It was extremely tight and dark. He was sure that he wasn't the only living being in the tree right now. In fact, he could feel an insect crawl on his neck. Being a small boy, he was scared of insects and only wanted to run away from his hiding spot, but he knew he couldn't as the tree would protect him from Konoha's winter. His stomach, then grumbled loudly. I'm hungry. I want food, the small boy cried. Enduring the pain, Naruto finally fell asleep. As Naruto groggily woke up, he felt something tickle his lips. After a few seconds he slightly jumped up in shock and started hitting his mouth. As he looked closely, he could see a spider running away. The boy slightly teared up and squeezed through the hole again. He stumbled and fell face forward to the ground. It took a few seconds until he was able to open his eyes because of the blinding light. Overnight it had snowed and everything was covered in white powder. Wow! The five-year-old breathed out. Pretty! The boy had never seen such a beautiful sight. The landscape was covered in snow and reminded him of a fairy tale the Hokage would read to him. It was about a princess getting lost in the wild and a prince saving her. This was said during the winter. Naruto had yet to realize that gathering food would be even harder than before. Finding food in the winter was hard but with everything covered in snow, almost impossible. Overwhelmed with emotions the boy sets out to look for even prettier sights. I'm really hungry, the boy complained as his stomach started hurting even more. Occasionally the blonde found food storages of squirrels in trees. Not wanting to steal everything he only took a few from each storage so he could survive. Naruto loved animals after all. As he was exploring the winter wonderland he completely forgot about the events that had conspired the day before. Hours had passed and Naruto was still walking around, unknowingly leaving the village further and further. As it started to get dark, the boy had to look for a place to sleep again. I miss Tuchi Ojasan and Ayame Ne, he thought sadly. He had met the ramen stand owners a few days ago. They don't look at me like the other villagers do. He wanted to taste the amazing food called ramen again. The food of the gods, as he called it. He was now around 2 to 3 kilometers away from Konoha. A cave, Naruto exclaimed before taking off towards the huge cave he had spotted. Wow, this cave is huge, I bet it's really warm inside. The cave was dark, so he put his right hand on the wall and started going inside. The stone was extremely cold, which made Naruto want to retreat his hand, but he needed it for guidement. Naruto was now starting to get a bit scared as he went further inside the gigantic cave. Instead of like a normal cave, this cave went inside the mountain for quite a bit and Naruto still had to discover where it went down. The further Naruto went inside, it got hotter, he was actually starting to sweat from the heat. Something had to be heating up the cave. Yikes! The blonde shouted as he fell and landed on something very hard, even harder than stone. This feels scaly, the boy said as he rubbed his head. The material reminded him of a lizard's scales. He and the Hokage had gone to play in the outskirts of Konoha a year back and Naruto had found a lizard. He still remembered the excitement he felt after finding it and his grandfather figure allowing him to touch it. These days, the Hokage had barely any time left to play with him. Naruto was very sad about this, but he knew that his grandfather figure was the Hokage and had to protect the village too. 
The blonde got up and noticed that he had probably scraped his knee, he wasn't sure because he couldn't see anything. Suddenly the floor shook and knocked him down again. This time he fell onto the cold stone floor. That was when he realized that the scaly material he had fallen onto before was very warm. W why is the floor shaking? He cried out. Who dares to wake me up from my slumber? A dark voice boomed. The entire cave suddenly lit up and Naruto gaped at what he saw. He started to lose consciousness. A -a 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 dragon? He shouted, his voice trembling in fear. The dragon was gigantic and dark red in color. Its lower body, the stomach, the inner portions of its long tail, legs and inner portions of the wings were beige. Its entire body was littered with scars, the largest one being an X-shaped around the center of its body. It had black spikes on its back, reaching to the end of its extremely long tail. It had three horns on its head, one being on the nose. The dragon was lying on the floor and raised its head. An. Google Igneal for a picture if the description wasn't detailed enough. A human? He wondered out loud. A hatchling at that. What do you want with the great fire dragon king Igneal? He roared. Naruto had to give his best to not wet himself, he was too shocked to answer. Answer me. He bellowed again. I, I, Naruto stuttered. I W was only L looking F for a place T to sleep, he managed to say. Igneal remained silent as he towered above the boy, he bent his head down and got closer. S stay away dragon. I if you mess with me, you'll have tea to pay the consequences, Naruto shouted, still shaking in fear. A puny human like you is threatening me. I'm no puny human, my name is Uzumaki Naruto, future Hokage of Konoha. Naruto roared as the dragon did, standing his ground. His knees were buckling and he wanted to throw up, but he'd never back down, he was Uzumaki Naruto. The name was going to be feared in the future. The dragon looked surprised as the boy declared that he was not scared. A boy that age should have already passed out of fear. No a grown man should have already passed out of fear. In the old days every dragon feared Igneal and for the first time, somebody declared that he was not going to get pushed around by him. You interest me boy. Uzumaki Naruto you say? Very interesting indeed. He shouted amused. He seems promising. Where are your parents hatchling? Naruto was shocked for a moment. But didn't let his guard down. He probably wants to make me think he's nice and then eat me. I don't have parents. He said emotionless. No parents? This seems too good to be true. It's been a while since I had an apprentice, does somebody look after you? The blonde winced. No, and not anymore. I got banished from the O orphanage. Only a hatchling and surviving alone? He's strong, Igneal then smirked. I won't let you eat me. Naruto spoke as he saw Igneal smirk. Naruto. How about I train you, make you strong? Naruto's expression changed from slightly scared and serious to dumbstruck. Huh? Was all he could say. I can teach you the ways of dragon slayer magic. M magic. Naruto became suspicious. Magic doesn't exist everyone knows that, you can't fool me, I won't let you eat me. Igneal chuckled slightly. You're wary E.H. I like that. Never trust anyone immediately, but no. I'm not lying. You shinobi use this power called, chakra. Right? Magic is similar. Why should chakra exist, but magic not? Occasionally, shinobi on missions would find the cave. They would enter it and scout it, but never make it outside again. Many challenged Igneal with a power called chakra. Instead of eating some right away, he made them tell him what the power they used is called. It didn't feel like magic after all. Why yes, but I can't use C chakra yet. The boy mumbled. But you're right. I guess magic could exist. Prove it and I'll believe you. Very well. Igneal tilted his head upwards towards the ceiling. He then took a small breath and spewed out a large beam of fire. Of course he held back immensely, not wanting the cave to collapse. A amazing, was all Naruto could say. The heat was almost unbearable. And I can learn that? That and more. Achieving your dream will be easier too. Oh okay, the Uzumaki said confidently. I won't disappoint you. That's the spirit Naruto. But I'll warn you already. The training will be harsh. Far harsher than any shinobi training you will ever do. Are you prepared? Yes, I am. I'll make everyone in the village recognize my strength. He was now grinning. B but how is this going to work out? 
I can't just leave the village and coming here and then leaving the same day doesn't make much sense. Igniel gave a long, hum, and started thinking. W what if I get Hokage Gigi to meet you, he might let you train me. Are you sure? The Hokage is the village leader right, how do you know him? He plays with me sometimes, he might agree after meeting you Igniel. All right. Stay here for the night and then go get that man tomorrow morning. But if he tries to make my power, his own like they have with the biju, I'll eat him. Bibiku? What's that? Naruto asked, puzzled. Don't worry about that yet. If I do start training you, I won't only be teaching you how to fight. Maths, English, history and common knowledge are also going to be taught by me. Now Naruto was starting to get interested. Learning and such didn't really sound appealing to him but he did want to learn how to read and write. He was planning on becoming a shinobi but the shinobi academy, usually, only starts with the age of 8. Before that children go to kindergarten, which was the orphanage in his case, and then later school. After three years of normal school, they get to choose between normal school and shinobi academy. Then at the age of 12, the students would, hopefully, graduate and become a shinobi. Does that mean that I get to skip normal school? The blonde asked excitedly. He was sure that the teachers wouldn't treat him well. That depends on the Hokage. The blonde was about to answer, but suddenly yawned. I'm getting tired, Igneal. That's fine. Good night, Naruto. The blonde then lay down onto the hot floor and fell asleep immediately. He was used to hard surfaces when sleeping, so it didn't really pose a problem. This kid. I sense a lot of magical potential. Not only that, but there also seems to be some kind of weird power inside of him. Darker and scarier chakra. Maybe. Igniel thought wisely. A Jinchuriki E.H. Even more interesting. I'll have to ask the Hokage tomorrow to make sure. Igniel then used his talons and gently lifted the boy up and leaned him against himself. He had already grown attached to the boy and hoped he could train him. He hadn't felt these emotions for thousands of years. Even the great fire dragon king Igniel had his sentimental moments. Everyone had them. You'll become a fine dragon slayer, Naruto. Igniel had not left his cave for around a thousand years. Due to some incidents in the past, he was believed dead. He had finally gotten his original strength back a few years ago. Although there was still one question left to be answered. How was he still alive? Dragons had a very long lifespan, but several thousand years were still unimaginable for a dragon. Currently, Igniel was the only dragon alive. The last ones had died a long time ago, while recovering in his cave, he had met the great Rakudu Senen. He had gifted him immortality. Igniel was now a being similar to a biju. Instead of being made up entirely of chakra, he was made up from magic. He could die, but would reform years later again. Now let's see what the Hokage says. The sound of water drops hitting the warm stone floor rang through the cave. The cave was dimly lit because of the fire dragon's scales which gave off some light. A blonde boy lay on top of the dark red dragon's talons. Although the scales were made of probably one of the hardest materials you'll ever find, they were comfortable. Naruto hadn't slept that well in months. The orphanage caretakers had, accidentally, broken his bed, which meant that Naruto had to sleep on the rather uncomfortable floor. Then he was kicked out and he had to sleep in a hollow tree. The blonde's eyelids started fluttering and he opened his eyes. Barely seeing anything, he started panicking. Where was he? Forgetting yesterday's ordeal he rolled to the side and fell of the dragon's talons. Hitting the floor hard he started grumbling and looked up. Seeing the gigantic and mighty creature he realized what had happened. You're up, good. I was starting to think you were dead. Igniel said, you should leave and find the Hokage. Oh, I almost forgot about that he, he said rubbing the back of his head. His stomach then, grumbled. I guess I'm hungry. I'll look for something on the way back. Igniel wanted to give Naruto something to eat, but when you're an immortal being made up of magic, you don't have the need to eat something. He'd have to teach Naruto how to hunt, if he did manage to persuade the Hokage to let Naruto live with him for the next years. Well, I'll leave now. See you later Igniel, Naruto cheered. Bye brat. Naruto turned around and started to carefully leave the cave. Apart from the small light that Igniel gave off, there wasn't a single light source in the whole cave. After a couple of minutes, Naruto got used to walking in the dark and started walking faster. Eventually the blonde saw a bright light. He started running quicker and finally was outside again. 
the snow had melted and only a few parts of the ground were still covered. Man I'm hungry. The blonde still couldn't believe what had conspired the day before, he had met a dragon. A real life dragon. It was even bigger and stronger than in the many fairy tales he had read with his grandfather. This one could even talk. He wondered if Igniel had kidnapped a princess before. He then started thinking about what Igniel had said. He was the fire dragon king. Did that mean that there were different elemental dragons too? Like wind, water, earth and so on? He had to ask him later. Actually making the Hokage believe him was the hardest part. Why should he believe him if he said that there was a dragon living three kilometers away from Konoha? He hoped that the Sandame had time and would think that the Uzumaki would only want to play pretend with him. In the distance he could already see the walls surrounding Konoha and the Hokage monument. A almost there. He gasped. He had sprinted the whole way to Konoha. Even though Naruto was a stamina beast, sprinting three kilometers was hard for a starving five-year-old. Returning back at the training grounds he made his way towards the Hokage Tower through alleys. He didn't want a villager to suddenly attack him. He wasn't attacked often, but it did happen. He had to be on guard. You're dismissed. An old man said. He had a slightly tanned face, covered in wrinkles. On the side of his nose he had a small wart. He was frowning and had a pipe resting on his lips. His gaze was calculating as he watched the merchant leave his office. He then sighed and inhaled some tobacco. All right then, back to the paper room. Gigi, he heard as the door was slammed open. Naruto ran towards the Hokage. He looks like he's been through hell, the Hokage thought. Hello Naruto-kun. I haven't seen you in a while, he smiled. Uhu, the last time we played was ages ago. The blonde complained, hugging his grandfather. But Gigi, I have something very important to talk about. The five-year-old said as serious as he could, which actually looked more cute than serious. Something serious? What is it Naruto-kun? The old man smiled. I was kicked out of the orphanage two days ago and went towards the outskirts of Konoha. The Sandame now looked serious, he had to pay that orphanage a visit, that was unacceptable. A and then I found a cave, T there I met, the boy said. Who did you meet? The Hokage was serious now. Igniel. A dragon, the Uzumaki exclaimed. The Sandame sat there for a while looking at Naruto. I thought somebody had hurt you Naruto-kun. Don't be so serious next time when playing, he scolded but then smiled. I actually have some time right now. Let's go and meet this so-called, dragon, the paperwork could wait. His surrogate grandson was more important. Gigi I'm not joking. Naruto pouted. I'll show you, but promise you won't attack him. Yes, I won't attack him Naruto-kun. He promised still thinking it was a prank. After all Naruto was known as a prankster. All right, I got him to come. I just hope he won't overreact when he sees Igniel, Naruto thought. The blonde's stomach, then grumbled. JGG can we go to Ichiraku Ramen before? He asked sweat dropping. Ah, of course Naru-kun. My treat. The Hokage smiled. Yay. I'll eat as much as I can. Naruto shouted, taking off towards Ichiraku Ramen. That boy. Hiruzen mumbled. He'll become a great shinobi, I know it. On his way to Ichiraku Ramen Naruto had thought of a way how the Hokage would not overreact when meeting Igniel. Sadly he didn't find an answer. Maybe he'd believe Naruto when they ventured far into the cave. Perhaps he'd find it more believing considering how far you had to go inside to meet Igniel. The blonde wouldn't just bring him there without reason. How much further Naruto-kun? Thankfully the Sandame had a lot of patience, he was the Hokage after all. We're almost there Gigi, he said turning right, there, you can already see it. The pair approached the cave, it's more of a tunnel going inside a mountain the Hokage thought. Did you really go inside here Naruto-kun? He asked growing concerned. The boy was only five years old, who knew what was hiding inside the cave. Uh huh, that's where I met Igniel, the blonde said ecstatically. The Hokage was actually starting to believe that Naruto did meet something in there. Of course not a dragon, but maybe something else. He searched the cave for a chakra signature, but couldn't find anything. Let's go inside Gigi. The old Hokage followed the young boy inside the cave and used one of his many jutsu to light up the cave. It was a simple survival jutsu that was easy to learn. Amazing. 
The blonde said in awe as the cave was lit up. He turned to his surrogate grandfather and noticed that his hand was glowing. Gigi teach me that jutsu. Maybe in the future Naruto-kun. He said smiling. Now let's go and find this, dragon. His name is Igneo, Gigi. The two had been walking for five minutes until Naruto shouted, Igneo, I brought the Hokage. The Hokage was very alert right now. Something had to be in this cave and he didn't like how it was manipulating Naruto. The ground shook and Hiruzen got a very bad feeling. Maybe we shouldn't G. Come on Gigi. The boy shouted excitedly and made his way further into the cave. Hiruzen cursed, but followed. As they got closer to this, dragon, the Hokage saw light in the distance. It wasn't sunlight, but something glowing. They got a few steps closer and the Hokage's pipe fell out of his mouth. In front of them, there was a dragon, a dark red, gigantic dragon. It's nice to meet you Hokage. Instead of answering the Hokage got into his battle stance and was about to summon Enma, king of the monkeys. Get back Naruto. W8 GG. Naruto shouted, getting in front of his surrogate grandfather. Please don't attack him, Igneel won't hurt us. The Hokage looked at the boy as if his Naruto had gone insane. I do not wish to fight you Hokage. The dragon replied calmly but powerful, however, if you attack me, I'll return the gesture. The old man looked at Naruto who had a hopeful expression and then back at the dragon. He was still wary, but he couldn't feel any killing intent coming from the dragon. Very well. This doesn't mean I trust you, but I shall listen to you. The Hokage finally replied slightly getting out of battle stance. Yay. Let's get right to business. Yesterday this brat found my cave, and though tit would be a good idea to venture inside. He then met me, but what surprised me most was, that even though he was scared, he wouldn't back down. After talking to him for a while I made up my mind. I like to train the brat in dragon slayer magic. Igneel rumbled. You want to train him? The Hokage asked shocked. And what is this magic you talk about? Indeed, I want to train him in the ways of dragon slayer magic. Magic is similar to chakra. The body has container, which lets it absorb ethereus, which are magic particles, and stores them in the container. People who use magic are called mages. They learn a magic style they find interesting, for example, requip magic. Requip magic lets you store objects in a parallel dimension. In battle you can then open this dimension and for example summon a sword. Doing this, uses magic power. Depending on what magic you are performing, the magic container slowly depletes. It then takes a while before the magic container is completely filled again so you can use a spell. Instead of the body producing the power itself like with chakra, the magic container absorbs magic power from your surroundings. Instead of normal magic, I'd be teaching Naruto a lost magic. These are extremely rare. Well, considering magic hasn't been used for thousands of years, each magic is lost but that isn't the point right now. In the old days, no magic could harm a dragon. The only magic with the potential to kill a dragon was dragon slayer magic and this can only be taught by a dragon. Of course you aren't strong immediately, so with just like every other magic in ninjutsu, it gets stronger the more you practice. It'll be a lot of hard work, but I'm sure Naruto can overcome it. Both the Hokage and Naruto listened closely. Naruto only understood half of what Igneel had said, but the Hokage was beginning to understand it. So technically I would be able to use magic? The Hokage asked in thought. Well no it's been thousands of years and the human body developed. Chakra is basically an evolved version of magic. You humans don't have a magic container anymore. But how am I supposed to learn the magic then? I thought you said I could learn it. The blonde shouted slightly hurt of being lied to. You can still learn it. B, really? How? The blonde interrupted Igneel. Igneel narrowed his eyes and snapped at Naruto. We'll have to work on that. Don't interrupt me. I was getting to that. Why yes. The Hokage looked at Igneel calculatingly. He didn't like how he spoke to Naruto but he was true. The blonde had to learn basic things like manners. I hold the power of creating a magic container. If I were to insert magic in your body, the body would be forced to adapt and would create a magic container. However, this process would kill a normal human being. Igneel then turned to the Hokage and said, I'm telling him about his tenant. The Hokage's eyes widened. How do you know about that? He demanded. If Igneel had eyebrows he would have raised one. 
I'm the mighty fire dragon king Igneal. Of course I can sense something like a biju. Biju. You said that yesterday too Igneal. What does that mean? Naruto asked puzzled. There are nine biju. The first one, the Ichibi, has one tail and the ninth, the Kayubi, has nine tails. You can guess how many tails the others have. A biju is a large demon constructed purely of chakra. They are chakra beings. W8 the Kayubi? Naruto asked in fear. It attacked the village five years ago, it is a biju? That's right, Naruto kun. The Hokage interfered. He looked back at Igneal and said, I shall tell Naruto. It is my duty. Although I think it's far too early for him to know the truth. I wanted him to have a nice childhood, without carrying the weight of knowing the truth. He turned to Naruto. Sadly, even without knowing the truth, your childhood is horrible Naruto-kun. Very well. W what truth? The boy asked, slightly scared. Five years ago, when the Kayubi attacked the village, the Yandaimi Hokage wasn't able to kill the beast. After all it is impossible to kill a biju. Are really? But what happened to the Kayubi? Naruto asked, fearing the truth. Hiruzen looked at the boy. He could see that he was slightly scared. Even with his bad childhood, Naruto was still a shining sunray of happiness. Hiruzen was actually scared of telling him the truth. Well, not scared, but he really didn't want to do it. Naruto, the Kayubi was sealed into you. The pure look of grief after hearing what the old man had said on Naruto's face made Hiruzen's heart clench. W what? The blonde managed to utter. No wonder everyone in the village hates me. I'm the demon that attacked them five years ago and killed all their loved ones. It all makes sense now, I'm a monster. He said in realization as he looked down at his hands which were shaking. Hiruzen was about to say something when suddenly Igneal chuckled. A monster? You are no monster. You're far too weak for being a monster. Igneal then stood up and towered above them both before roaring, I am a monster. Naruto looked extremely scared and even Hiruzen was shaken up. He's even stronger than the Kayubi, he thought. That's right Naruto-kun. You are no monster. You aren't the Kayubi. It is sealed inside you. That doesn't mean that you are it. W what do you mean Gigi? He asked, realizing he might not actually be a monster. Here, look, Hiruzen then took out a sealing scroll and a kanai. You are the sealing scroll and the Kayubi is the kanai. When I seal the kanai inside the sealing scroll, it still stays the sealing scroll. It doesn't turn into the kanai. You merely are the Kayubi's jailer, while it is your prisoner. Naruto looked at the Hokage in amazement, I understand Gigi. The old man went to Naruto and hugged him. Naruto started crying as he could feel the affection and love radiate from the hug. Even Hiruzen started tearing up. You are very strong Naruto-kun, far stronger than me or anyone else, one day, you'll make the whole village recognize that strength, he said letting Naruto go. Yeah, I'll become the Hokage Gigi, just you wait. Meanwhile Igneal just stared at the two of them. Long ago, there was a civil war between dragons. One side thought they could coexist with humans and live in harmony, while the other side wanted to eat all humans and raise their settlements. During this moment he just saw, he was glad that he chose to live in harmony with the humans. They were unpredictable creatures. Now Naruto-kun, let's get back to your training, okay? As I said before, a normal human would die from absorbing my magic and forcing a magic container to be created, however, I believe that the healing powers of the Kayubi could keep you alive. S so that means that I can become a mage? Naruto exclaimed excitedly, seemingly already haven't forgotten what had just transpired. Wait. The Hokage said, you only think that he could survive? You don't have proof? Well no as I said, I've never tried this out before, but I'm certain that he will survive. Those odds aren't good enough for me. I don't want to lose him, Hiruzen said, standing his ground. Gigi. I really want to do this. It's the first good thing that has ever happened to me in my entire life. Igneal doesn't hate my like others and actually wants to train me, Naruto pleaded. I know Naruto-kun but that still isn't good I know. Wait. Igneal said, interrupting Hiruzen. After you are allowing me to train him, I only planned on doing that at least one year after training with me. But how is he supposed to learn magic without a container? The Hokage asked. I won't teach him magic yet. This is a good time for me to tell you about what I'm planning on training him. 
The next half an hour the Hokage and Igniel talked about what Igniel would teach him. Apparently the whole first year was only about strengthening Naruto's body. For learning Dragon Slayer magic, a strong body was the most important thing. Because of this, the chance of Naruto surviving would be far higher too with his magic container, surgery. He would also teach Naruto basic things like reading and writing as well as most other important things you learn in school. Hiruzen thought that Igniel only wanted to teach Naruto, magic but it seemed like he was going to be teaching him everything useful, like surviving, cooking etc. Knowledge and many more. Then in the second year he would finally start teaching Naruto magic. Naruto was pretty mad that he wasn't going to learn it right away, but hearing that he only had to wait one year, cheered him up again. The second year he would also continue on teaching him normal things, other children learn in school. In the third year, Igniel was also going to add battle tactics to the curriculum. Now the real problem arose. Naruto also wanted to become a ninja and in three years time, the academy started. There were four years of ninja academy in total. They decided that Naruto was going to join them for the third year, as the first year specialized in ninja history, which was important too, but he'd learn more important things from Igniel. The second year was all about strengthening the body, so they would be able to use chakra better. The already advanced children, like the ones from shinobi clans or just strong civilians, would already start chakra training at the end of year 2, but that was no problem as half of the class, or more, only started in year 3. Civilian kids, in year 3 and 4 the real shinobi training began, meaning that Naruto wouldn't miss too much. First Naruto was slightly sad that he wouldn't be joining the other children immediately, but he then heard Hiruzen say that they were only going to do boring stuff so he didn't really mind anymore. During year 3 and year 4, Naruto would go to the academy during the first part of the day and would then go train with Igniel in the second half. At least that was what Igniel had proposed, but he knew that that would be hard for Naruto, as they would probably train further away from Konoha and not stay 3 kilometers away from it, like they were now. That was when Hiruzen proposed that Naruto should learn the Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. A Jutsu where the user can create a solid copy of oneself. Of course the real Naruto also had to go to the academy so Hiruzen proposed that the real Naruto went to academy for two weeks and then his clone for two weeks. Igniel was extremely satisfied with this as well. Naruto would be able to go up against children his age in taijutsu matches, which would also give him a chance to see how powerful he'd become. But there was only one thing Naruto didn't like. Igniel, why am I not allowed to use my magic in academy? The boy whined. We don't want you hurting your fellow classmates. You will probably be stronger than them, Hiruzen said. Indeed. The Hokage is correct. I don't want you showing off anything you learned from me. Is that clear? Igniel boomed. I also don't think that the Hokage would want to explain to the academy teachers how you can eat fire. Naruto and the Hokage just stared at the dragon dumbstruck. He eat fire. Both shouted. Oh, that's right. I have not told you yet what you would learn. But yes, that is an ability of a dragon slayer. Your lungs will become dragon lungs. T that's so cool, Naruto roared. I'll show you world, Uzumaki Naruto will be stronger than everyone else. The Hokage only smiled, but turned to the dragon. Naruto will become strong. Good, he smiled. Yes. There are a lot of interesting abilities, he'll get. All of his senses will be like that of a dragon. His hearing will be amazing. His sense of smell will be better than a dog and many other powerful attributes. Perfect for a ninja, now that you mention it. I won't tell you anymore though. You'll have to see when the time comes. That sounds amazing. The Hokage breathed out. About the thing with, when the time comes. Where will you be training and for how long will Naruto be gone? I was planning on flying away, to some uninhabited land. After five years we'll be probably back. Igniel told him. That's too long. The Hokage decided. During the first year I want to see him for one day, every three months. I also want to be present when you perform this magic container creating. During the second year I want to see him every six months. After that it's fine if you only contact me and tell me how he's doing. It's to be expected that you want to meet him as much as possible. Fine, we'll do as you say, as long as it doesn't interfere with his training. Igniel agreed. I'm going to be gone for a long time. Naruto said only noticing how long he was going to be training now. Yes, it is, but it'll be worth it. Igniel said reassuring Naruto. 
The Hokage looked at Naruto and said, I think we discussed everything. D do you mean that? Naruto stuttered, Yes, I think you can start your training now. I'll miss you Naruto-kun. The blonde looked at the Hokage before breaking down and started crying. He ran towards the old man and gave him a bone-crushing hug. Thank you for everything Gigi. The Hokage was surprised by this but returned the hug. It's been a long time since he felt so many emotions at once, he was really old. Now Naruto-kun, don't cry, I'm going to be seeing you again in three months. Why yes, true. Naruto said, wiping away his tears. See you soon Gigi. The Hokage never imagined something like this to happen. He was sure nobody had expected little Naruto to find a dragon. The dragon even wanted to train Naruto. Goodbye Gigi. The said boy shouted happily while sitting on Igneel's back. Igneel was so big, you could barely see Naruto. After Igneel had spread his wings, he looked even huger. He was the same size as the Kyubi, which did disturb Hiruzen slightly. He still had dreams of that night. Goodbye Naruto. After he said that, Igneel gave the old man another nod and flapped his gigantic wings slightly. He bent his knees and jumped. The wings started flapping faster and they took off. The Hokage had to apply chakra to his feet as the massive beast took off. The trees around Hiruzen were all disrooted and countless animals ran away. Amazing. He breathed out. While it looked majestic for Hiruzen, it was hell for Naruto. The boy held onto the dragon as tightly as he could but he couldn't shake the feeling that he was going to fall off. After a few minutes of flying, he grew accustomed and actually realized how amazing it felt. They were so fast. Woo. This is amazing. The boy called out. I'm glad you're enjoying it. That means I can increase the speed, right? Igneel said smirking. Why you can go even faster? The blonde enjoyed flying but this was already extremely fast. How fast could Igneel go? Far faster brat. This is actually the slowest I can go without falling out of the sky. Before the blonde could say anything, Igneel's speed increased drastically. They were now ten times faster than before. The blonde was shit scared. This would take a lot of getting used to. Igneel had been flying for an hour now, which must have meant they were pretty far away. Igneel's speed was nothing to joke about. Were there brat? Naruto was sure they flew over the ocean for around 20 minutes which meant that this place was probably completely uninhabited by humans. Even though they were far away, the terrain was similar to Konoha. Everything was covered in trees and occasionally there was a meadow. This looks similar to Konoha, he said slightly disappointed, he hoped to see some new terrain nobody had ever seen before him. Igneel didn't answer but instead flew towards a mountain. It looked like it had a small cave inside which was probably going to be their home for the next five years. The dragon landed in the spacious cave and told Naruto to get down. All right, get ten minutes rest and then I'll fly us down. Naruto only realized how much his arms hurt now, he had to hold onto Igneel very tightly so he wouldn't fall off, oh okay. After ten minutes just lying on the floor, Naruto got up and climbed onto Igneel's back again. The fire dragon took off but instead of landing at the bottom of the mountain, he actually flew a bit further. Get down. He demanded. Naruto quickly jumped off his back. Sheesh, don't be so stingy. The dragon only looked at him and said, you have five days. Five days for what? The blonde asked, confused. Five days to get to the mountain. If you don't make it in time I'll leave you here forever. Grumbled the dragon as he started taking off again. W wait. The mountain is like 15 kilometers away. The dragon didn't answer and took off again. Igneel. Naruto shouted in desperation. He tsked. 15 kilometers is nothing. It won't take a day. He said confidently as he started running towards the mountain. Only for Naruto to suddenly hear growling. What Igneel hadn't mentioned was that there were many dangerous animals living in these lands. A a tiger? The boy with whiskers screamed. He only had seconds to react as the tiger already pounced on him. He quickly jumped to his right, narrowly avoiding the tiger. Shit! He swore. Luckily there were many trees around him as he quickly turned his back to the tiger and started climbing as quickly as he could. Naruto was very good at climbing trees. He often played in the forest and climbed the trees there. Not to mention it also was the ideal hiding space from an angry civilian mob. The tiger sped towards the tree where Naruto was trying to get to safety. 
Jumping on its hind legs, it started scratching the tree. Unfortunately the five-year-old wasn't fast enough and one claw managed to cut him on the back of his leg just above his feet. He cried out in pain but managed to get on a branch. The tiger was still standing on its hind legs and scratching the tree. I made it. The boy puffed out. He was out of breath. He then cursed as he looked down and saw what was stinging. Thankfully the tiger had only managed to scrape him, so it wasn't a deep cut but it still hurt like a bitch. He then looked down the tree and could see the tiger lying underneath the tree, clearly waiting for him to come down. This training was going to be tougher than he thought. The blonde had been sitting on the tree branch for the past four hours until the tiger suddenly got up and lost interest. He probably found an easier to catch and tastier animal to prey on. Finally, the blonde sighed as he made sure that the tiger completely left. I already wasted precious time. If this continues on, I might not make it to the mountain in time. It was late in the afternoon now and soon he already would need to find a sleeping spot, he was running as fast as he could, to make up for the lost time. As he made his way towards the mountain, he had seen a lot of different animals. There were far more than in Konoha's surrounding forest. Each time as he got too close to a herd of deer, they would immediately run away. The same went for other animals living in the forest. Naruto then heard the rushing of flowing water in the distance. It was slightly off track but he was already starting to get thirsty so he didn't mind. When he approached he saw the sapphire blue stream, gently curving through the forest, he cheered and started drinking. He had never tasted water so delicious before in his life. Konoha's rivers were already good, but this was on another level. Nature, huh? He took another handful of water and continued drinking, he then realized something. All streams had a source and this source was mostly located on a mountain. If he followed this river, he would surely arrive at the mountain, plus he would have a water source and maybe even a food source. While drinking he thought he had seen some fish swim by. He looked around and finally found what he was searching for underneath a tree. Picking it up, he inspected it and cracked a smile. This'll do fine. It was a sturdy, rather long stick the blonde had picked up. He took the nearest stone and started sharpening the top of the stick. He still remembered doing it with his grandfather. Flashback. I found one Gigi, a four-year-old Naruo shouted, running towards his grandfather. A good job Naruto-kun, he replied happily, but what do you need a long stick for? Is it something necessary for camping? Naruto asked clearly not knowing what his grandfather was going to do. Here, I'll show you. The old man took a stone and started scraping off wood at the top of the stick. After doing so a couple of times, he touched the tip and nodded. This should do. The man then stood up and went towards the river. He called the young boy over and told him to watch the water closely. The blonde still didn't know what his grandfather was about to do but compiled nevertheless. He saw a few fish swimming around until he heard his grandfather shout, Now! The Hokage thrust his makeshift spear into the river and pulled out a now dead fish. The young boy's face turned very pale. His grandfather saw this and said, Sometimes we need to kill others, so we can stay alive ourselves. That's the law of nature. You try it Naruto-kun. He took off the dead fish and set it aside, he then gave the stick to Naruto. Oh okay. Flashback end he still remembered how he felt after killing the fish. He felt slightly nauseous but proud that he had managed to catch one on his very first try. The Hokage had then shown him how to start a fire and then they cooked the fish. Just like the Hokage had done, Naruto touched the tip of his stick and nodded. He went back to the river and got inside. He waited for around five minutes until he finally saw a group of fish approach. He concentrated and controlled his breathing. Wait until they come close and then strike. He knew he wasn't allowed to move until the very last second, otherwise, they would swim away before he had the chance to strike. The blonde got a look of determination on his face and struck. He pulled his spear out of the water and saw it had pierced a fish. The fish flailed for a second before it stopped moving. It was already dusk when Naruto had finally found all things needed for a campfire. Now, how did Gigi do this again? He realized he had forgotten. It took Naruto one and a half hours before he had managed to start a fire. Others would have given up a long time ago, but he was Uzumaki Naruto. He didn't give up. The night time was far colder than back in Konoha, so he had frozen until he managed to get the fire started. Even with the fire, it was still cold. He held the fish above the flames and a few minutes later started eating. 
Naruto wasn't used to luxuries like salt and pepper anyway so the unseasoned fish didn't bother him. Naruto was starting to get anxious. What if the tiger attacked him again? He couldn't defend himself when he was sleeping after all. He decided to sleep on one of the trees next to him. He didn't care if it was uncomfortable or if he fell down. It was better than getting eaten alive. The fire was about to go out so he made his way to the next tree. It looked more comfortable than the others so he started climbing. As he got on one of the branches, the fire finally went out and he was completely unable to see anything. He shivered. It was the first time in his life that he felt so cold. He just hoped the Kyubi would keep him from dying. Shit. The boy groaned. He got up and rubbed his head. I got caught off guard. He didn't know how long he had been unconscious for, but the last thing he remembered was, getting ready to go sleep. After he climbed the tree he was sure that nothing could happen anymore, but he was very wrong. Right after closing his eyes, he felt something on his neck and then he heard something, hiss, he only remembered excruciating pain on the shoulder and then fell unconscious. Son of a bitch. He grunted as he looked at his right shoulder. A snake bite was clearly visible, he then clutched his head in pain. Naruto had a terrible headache. H how am I still alive? Of course, the Kyubi. Igneal and the Hokage did say that it had its benefits to have a giant mass of chakra sealed inside oneself. He looked around and realized he sat on the ground. He must have fallen off the tree, which was a given. After all, he was bit by a probably poisonous snake. He wanted to cry so badly, it hurt, but if he'd stop here, everything would be for naught. Bringing the Hokage to the cave, persuading him to let him be trained by Igneal and the promise he made, to return stronger. He had to be strong now. Filling his whole body with determination, he got up. The Uzumaki cursed. He didn't know how long he had been unconscious for. It might have been a night, maybe a few days but perhaps also a week. The blonde had to hurry. He went to the river and drank some water, wiped his face and then narrowed his eyes. Hopefully, he could still do this. He began to run. Naruto had been running for quite a while now. The mountain got closer and closer. He was about to shout out in glee that he might still make it until he heard a growl. And no. He whispered in horror. He quickly turned around and saw a tiger. If the situation weren't so dangerous he might have been amazed by the strength of the creature but he really couldn't afford to do that now. Was it the same tiger? He didn't know and didn't really care either. The blonde had to pay attention now. The next tree was around 10 meters away. Probably a bit less. H hey there little kitty. He stuttered while walking to the tree very slowly backwards, please don't hurt me. He doubted the tiger could understand him, but he did it more as a way to calm himself down a bit. But of course, the tiger wouldn't allow him to get too close to the tree so it pounced on him. Unlike last time, he wasn't close enough to make a dash towards the tree. Turning his back to the tiger now would mean death. Gripping his fishing spear tightly there was only one thing he could do. He waited until the beast got closer and put his left foot forward. Take this. The boy roared as loud as he could, thrusting the spear into the tiger's eye. The beast cried out in pain and stopped its advance. Now, he shouted as he turned around and quickly sped towards the tree. He climbed it as fast as he could and sat down on a branch. He was breathing heavily. Turning his head towards the tiger wailing in agony he realized that he had done that. Naruto looked down at his hands. One was holding the bloody spear while the other one was clenched into a fist. Sometimes we need to kill others, so we can stay alive ourselves, that's the law of nature. He now completely understood what his grandfather had said, he might have not killed the tiger but he did disable it. The blonde then smirked. I'm one step closer to becoming Hokage. He then frowned. How come his shoulder didn't hurt when he stabbed the tiger with the spear in his right hand? He looked at his shoulder and his eyes widened. The bite was gone. Amazing. He was then brought out of his thoughts when he saw the tiger coming towards him while growling. If it had been angry before, it was furious now. Shit. He swore. How am I supposed to get away now? Closing his eyes and thinking for a few seconds made him remember how shinobi traveled. They usually jump from tree branch to tree branch. Although Naruto didn't learn how to use chakra yet, he still wanted to try it. The next branch was only 30 centimeters away. He stood up and used the tree for support. The blonde then let go and jumped on the other branch. He had too much energy and didn't stop after landing, which forced him to jump to the next one. 
there he hit the tree and was forcibly stopped. Ouch! He complained rubbing his nose. He looked down and saw the tiger following him and growled as he saw that Naruto didn't need to go down. Almost there, Igneel! The blonde shouted. He had finally arrived at the base of the mountain. The blonde waited for a few seconds until he saw the large dragon emerge from the cave. He flew down and Naruto grinned, showing all of his teeth. The tiger had left him alone after realizing that he wouldn't be able to catch Naruto. No matter how hard he wanted revenge for his eye. I see you made it brat. Igneel said greeting the blonde, in four days too. Four days? He asked. That means I was out for two days. Naruto mumbled to himself. That brat, Igneel thought. He actually made it. Seems like I was right about him. All right. Let's get started on your training. Eh? I don't get to rest. He shouted. Well, fine by me. I'm all fired up. The blonde had managed to survive the first test. He was more than ready. Naruto was actually very proud of himself. He even considered using a spear in the future, but he wasn't sure yet. Run. Igneel puffed out. I'm okay. The blonde said questioningly. He ran for about 20 minutes before he stopped. What now? Igneel slammed his hand onto the ground next to Naruto, leaving behind a crater. I didn't tell you to stop, he roared. Naruto screamed and started running again. Each time Naruto would stop running, Igneel would attempt to flatten him with his huge hand. You're allowed to stop, Igneel said, chuckling evilly. Naruto fell to the ground and started gasping for air. He had been running for the past six hours, not jogging, but running. After 30 seconds Igneel then smirked and said, Now push ups. Naruto didn't dare to stop this time. The blonde felt something on his lips tickle and immediately slapped it as hard as he could. Well this seems familiar, he chuckled as he looked at his hand. A dead spider was squashed on it. He then remembered the day it had first happened to him. The orphanage had kicked him out and he had to sleep inside a tree. The next day he had found a cave and met the fire dragon king Igneel. Naruto then looked to his left, there the huge dragon was sleeping. Flames coming out, each time he snored. The boy still remembered when he made fun of that. Igneel had smacked him on his head before he started laughing too. Their relationship had progressed a lot during the past year. He thought of Igneel as his father and he was pretty sure that Igneel thought of him as his son. In the beginning, he thought that Igneel was a mighty dragon with no humor whatsoever, but he quickly realized that that wasn't the case. The two joked around a lot together. The blonde then got up from his bed, that he had made himself out of wood and animal hide. One of Igneel's first lessons was hunting. After all the blonde needed to eat something else than fish too. He had already managed to take down a deer after a week. This was no simple feat. Deer were fast and as soon as they heard something they would run away. Naruto had used the trees to his advantage and jumped onto a deer from a branch. The animal had no chance. He went towards Igneel and shouted as loud as he could into his ear. Wake up. He had soon learned that a dragon's senses were extremely good, which also meant that they were sensitive to loud noises close to them. The past year Naruto had grown a lot. He was smarter, stronger and very cunning. In everyday life, the blonde was pretty dumb and Igneel had yet to find out if he was only playing dumb or if he was just too lazy. After all, when he was fighting, the boy was on a whole different level. At first glance it might seem like, he was only rushing his enemies, which isn't a very good strategy but it was far more complicated than that. Every strike was planned, no matter how random it was. The Uzumaki's face had lost a lot of baby fat and now looked more serious. He was only 6 years old, so you couldn't see a lot of muscles yet but in a few years, the blonde would be sporting a six pack. His body was ready for the magic container, surgery. His mind was quite advanced too for a six year old. Igneel had taught him a lot of things, students would only learn later on in school, but the Uzumaki hadn't even noticed. His grandfather also gave him a new book, each time they met. The first ones were about chakra and chakra control. Originally he hadn't planned on teaching Naruto about chakra yet but it seemed as the boy was eager to start learning so he gave him a few books. The Uzumaki had already connected with his own chakra and already started doing the tree climbing exercise. He hadn't mastered it yet but considering he was only 6 years old and he only had the book about chakra control for a month or so, he was pretty advanced. After all, there were easier chakra control exercises like the leaf balancing one, which he already completed. 
he only started tree climbing a week ago. His grandfather had also given him a book on fuinjutsu. Usually, Naruto hated reading but he loved picking up the heavy fuinjutsu book. It came to him naturally. He couldn't wait for his grandfather to give him the next book on fuinjutsu. He had gotten new clothes from his grandfather after he saw how torn his old ones were. He now wore new black shinobi sandals, black shorts with orange outlines and an orange t-shirt with a red flame on the front. His hair had grown longer as well and he sprouted a hairstyle similar to the yandaimi, which he didn't know of course. Naruto. Igniel roared after getting woken up like that. You brat, do you want me to leave you alone again in the forest? N no. The blonde paled. He still wasn't strong enough to face a tiger or any other dangerous animal living there. Good brat, he smiled. We're getting the Hokage, it's time. Naruto just stood there for a second until he grinned so much that it hurt. Finally, he laughed out. Let's go, he shouted as he climbed on Igniel's back. The flight felt like hours for Naruto. He was so excited. When they finally arrived, Naruto jumped down and started running towards the village. They were in the cave where Naruto had met Igniel. Apparently, they were going to do it there. Naruto arrived at Konoha and started running through the crowded streets towards the Hokage Tower. The villagers looked at him in surprise. They rarely saw him these days which they were glad for of course. Their children were safe from the monster. Those looks of surprise however quickly turned into glares. But they were also greatly disturbed. He looked so similar to the Yandaimi, but they quickly ridded themselves of those thoughts. Tisk, I'll show them all. Naruto thought, he didn't care about the glares as much as he used to. He had a family now, he smiled. The Hokage Tower was now in front of him. He entered and immediately the most shinobi looked at him. The boy came here every three months but otherwise, they never saw him. The last time he'd been there was a month ago, so why was he here again? I'd like to talk to Gigi, he said to the Hokage's secretary. She already knew him and nodded. He's free in ten minutes. Thanks, he smiled at her and sat down on a nearby chair. The blonde was already very excited but at the same time he couldn't help but feel nervous too. Normal people would die from getting a magic container. Of course it had to hurt a lot. Naruto hadn't realized he had been thinking for ten minutes until the Hokage came out of his office with a shinobi and saw him. Naruto-kun, he smiled at the boy. Let's go to my office, alright? Naruto looked up in surprise and smiled. The two went into his office and the Hokage gestured the Anbu to leave his office. So it's time? He asked. Yup, you're supposed to come with me to the cave. Naruto answered smiling. However that smile never really reached his eyes. Don't worry Naruto-kun, everything will be fine. He reassured the child. Let's go. On their way towards the cave, they talked about what Naruto had learned during the past month. He was surprised to hear that the boy already mastered the leaf chakra control exercise and was about to master the tree one too. I can already go up three quarters of a tree. That's amazing Naruto-kun. You might be the next Kakashi or Itachi, he said shocked. Huh, who are they? He asked scratching his head. They are shinobi of the village, like you will be too one day. Cool, Naruto exclaimed with stars in his eyes, they seem to be pretty strong. And Itachi is only 11, but he'll be turning 12 soon. Now this made Naruto halt for a second. Only 11? Oh, he'd show the Hokage. He'd be even stronger than this Itachi at the age of 11. They finally arrived at the cave and started walking inside. He wanted to tell the Hokage about him liking Fuinjutsu, but he could do that later on too. Good afternoon Hokage, Igniel said as he saw them approaching. Ah, hello Igniel, he said smiling. You're doing a great job, Naruto is already exceeding my expectations. That's good to hear. The real training only starts now. I'm more than ready, Naruto smirked. So are we doing this or not? Patience Naruto, Igniel chuckled before turning serious. There's no going back, are you prepared? Yes, let's do this. Igniel told the boy that he should lie down on the floor. He also asked the Hokage for assistance. Do you have a jutsu to keep him from moving? Now the Hokage looked slightly concerned before nodding. Waiter style. Water whip jutsu, he said spitting out some water. The water then turned into long very thin whips, that bound Naruto to the floor. Naruto prepared himself mentally for the pain. 
This is going to hurt Naruto. I will channel a very small amount of magic into your body, this will only take a second, however the process of creating a magic container will be longer. How long, I don't know myself. Oh okay, the blonde said. The Hokage nodded too. No matter how much pain Naruto will go through, I don't want you interfering, you won't be able to do anything anyway. I know it will pain you to see Naruto like that, but you aren't the only one that loves him. Igneal explained as he looked Hiruzen straight into the eye. I understand, he compiled. Naruto started tearing up slightly after he heard those words. I trust you Igneal, he said smiling. Igneal nodded and touched Naruto with his claw. The claw was bigger than Naruto, which did look amusing. Igneal then used as little magic as he could and inserted it into Naruto. The blonde's eyes widened and he started screaming. He tried breaking free of the water whips but it didn't work. He had never felt pain like this before. Igneal took away his claw, as he was finished and winced at Naruto's screams. N Naruto-kun! Hiruzen shouted. Stay strong, Naruto could barely hear the Hokage's words as he screamed from the pain. This was 100 times worse than the snake bite, if not more. Tears started running down his face as he howled. An. Imagine Luffy's screaming and impelled down, if you know it. 30 minutes. Naruto had been screaming for 30 minutes until he finally fell unconscious. Any longer and the Hokage wouldn't have been able to bear it. He quickly checked if Naruto still had a pulse and was relieved as he felt it beat. Slowly, but it was still there. Seems like he survived, Igneal sighed relieved. I can feel magic coming from him. Although it is very weak, that is to be expected. First we'll have to work on expanding it. Hiruzen looked at the boy and dissolved the water whips binding him. I wonder how long he will be unconscious for. Drip 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 was those water drops that the blonde heard. Naruto's eyes shot open. Where was he? It looked like a sewer. He then noticed he was standing in water. It only reached up to his feet though. Looking around, he suddenly felt an ominous presence. It came from right ahead. What is this feeling? He wondered after walking five minutes, I'm getting closer. When he finally arrived, he saw huge steel bars. It looked like a cage. In the middle there was a piece of paper with some weird shapes on it. The blonde realized this was a ceiling array. Wow, he said amazed. He was about to get closer until he suddenly felt killing intent. Naruto jumped back and looked inside the cage. Something was moving inside and getting closer. So you finally decide to visit me human. How nice of you. A giant red fox said looking down at him. W who are you? The blonde asked scared. Me? Are you really that dumb human? Maybe this will help you. He growled as he waved with his nine tails. You hear the Kayubi? Naruto shouted in shock. He quickly got into fighting stance. Don't worry, I can't harm you anyway, he glared. Not because of these bars anyway. He roared as he hit them with his tails. The blonde relaxed slightly as he saw that the Kayubi couldn't do anything. He started thinking about why he was suddenly brought here. It must have been because he was in a near death state. You almost died out there, human. Without me, you would be dead. Naruto decided not to answer. He looked at the Kayubi. So, this was the reason why he was hated his whole life. Only because some stupid fox attacked the village and got sealed inside him. Naruto glared at the Kayubi. Ho, oh, you're glaring at me, human. You're more foolish than I thought you were. If I were outside right now, I'd kill you, he snarled. Believe me, I also don't want you inside me, however it's impossible for me to free you. I'd rather not die. I've still got things to do, Dadbeo, he snarled back. The Kayubi narrowed its eyes, however I need to thank you too. Thanks for keeping me alive during the whole ordeal, Naruto smiled. The Kayubi's eyes widened slightly again, before it closed them and lay down again. Naruto then woke up. Erg, he groaned. This happens way too often to me his whole body hurt. How are you feeling? Igneal asked concerned. Naruto looked to his right and saw Igneal lying there. I feel like shit. That's good. It could be worse, he said wisely. Where is Gigi? He coughed out. He really hoped his grandfather would stay with him. He's the Hokage brat. He could never stay with you for four days. Don't be so spoiled. I was out for four days, he shouted in shock. Of course the Hokage wouldn't be able to stay that long, he had a village to protect after all. You can go to the village now and say goodbye. 
I'm not sure when you will see him the next time. He said he was interfering with your training and it was alright if you only visit him rarely. Apparently he wants you to grow strong and surprise him. Igniel rumbled. Oh okay. I'll go say goodbye. I can't wait to start my training. He yelled in glee and took off. However he stopped and turned around. It did work right? I do have a magic container now? It worked. You now can become a mage, Naruto grinned at him. Thank you very much Igniel. He took off towards the village. This time Naruto simply couldn't wait. When he arrived at the Hokage Tower he immediately ran towards the Hokage's office. The secretary tried to stop him but he just burst through the doors. He was lucky, as his Gigi was only doing paperwork when he was interrupted. Gigi! He shouted. The Hokage looked up in surprise and made a gesture for his Anbu to not do anything. Naruto-kun, he exclaimed. You look stronger already, he smiled. Very funny Gigi, he pouted. I'm here to say goodbye. Igniel told me I won't be visiting you so often anymore and I was wondering if you could give me some more Funjutsu books? The Hokage blinked at him but then smiled. Funjutsu eh, I had a feeling you'd like it, let me get some more. He got up and walked to one of many bookshelves in the room. Let's see, Funjutsu. Here we go, he took out three different books and handed them to Naruto. These should do for the beginning right? Wow. The blonde's mouth opened slightly, yeah, that's more than enough, thanks Gigi. Naruto smiled fondly. He had talked to his grandfather for another hour before he made his way back to the cave. Igniel hadn't wasted any time and gestured for the boy to climb on his back. He actually managed to do it with chakra this time. The flight home was rather boring, but the dragon already told Naruto what he was going to train him in, for the next year. He dropped a few words, the blonde didn't know yet but everything sounded exciting. It was already night when the two had arrived and Naruto had to give his best, to not fall off. He was extremely tired, he didn't say much to Igniel and immediately went to sleep, he had to be rested for tomorrow. As soon as the blonde woke up he jumped to his feet, Igniel, he shouted, let's start training already. The dragon grumbled as he got up, he wasn't a morning person, morning dragon, whatever. Alright, let's start if you're so eager. Igniel then flew them down and said, alright, you already know what magic is right. The boy nodded. Mages have things called magic containers in their bodies. These absorb Aethernano, magic particles, from around them and use spells. The dragon nodded. That's correct. However your magic container isn't quite ready yet, it's still far too small. For the next week we will expand it. I want you to expel magic at a constant rate until your magic container is empty. Then you will rest and do it again, understood? Crystal. The blonde answered as he sat down cross-legged. Igniel had already told him how to find his magic once before. Apparently it's the same as with chakra. However the blonde had to pay attention because magic was easily mistaken with his chakra. After a few tries he got it down and expelled his magic. It was orange in color. His reserves were pretty small, so he could only do it for a few minutes. He did this for a week. 16 minutes, a new high score, he shouted. This alerted the sleeping dragon. 16. That should be enough for starting to learn Dragon Slayer magic, he mused. All right. He grinned. But what do I do? He then realized he had no idea how to learn a type of magic. Dragon Slayer magic is very different to others. When a Dragon Slayer breathes out fire for example, they don't turn their magic power into fire, but they turn their lungs into dragon lungs. Dragon Slayers use their magic to turn their bodies into a dragon's. Not physically of course. If you were to ignite your hand in fire, it wouldn't hurt you because you coat your hand in dragon slayer magic. That's why a dragon slayer needs a strong body. Otherwise you would hurt yourself. Do you understand? Igniel explained. I think I get it. It's not like with chakra if you spit out a huge fireball. When doing the great fireball jutsu, you spit out a huge amount of chakra and turn it into fire chakra. But when using a dragon slayer technique you coat your lungs in dragon slayer magic turning them into a dragon's, and then exhale. Just like a dragon, fire will come out naturally, he summoned up. Igniel stared at the kid in shock, how do you know so much? Um. I read the books Gigi gives me, he said scratching the back of his head in embarrassment. Fine. Well let's get started. There are multiple ways for learning dragon slayer magic. First try and imagine a flame. 
I got it. The boy shouted. Igniel turned around in shock. There, the boy's index finger was set aflame. It had only been four days. That was far faster than any other student he ever had. Amazing. He breathed out. He couldn't hide his shock. The boy was actually starting to get embarrassed. He had never left the dragon speechless before. His concentration ended and the flame extinguished. The fire had been a bright orange color. He was so lucky. That was his favorite color. Igniel smiled at Naruto. You really amazed me there Naruto. Now try covering your entire hand. That's the first technique I'm teaching you. The fire dragon's iron fist. After encasing your hand in fire, you throw a punch at your target. That punch will become far more powerful because of the power. The stronger your magic power is, the stronger the attack. That will be your signature move. All right. Let's do this. The attack sounded really awesome. He tried it again, but only managed to light one finger again. The blonde cursed. Don't worry, you're already very advanced for the first four days. You'll be able to do it in no time. Igniel laughed. Stronger Naruto. Put more magic into it. Igniel shouted. Shut up. Naruto said annoyed. He had already learned the beginner dragon slayer spells. This contained the fire dragon's iron fist, the fire dragon's roar, which was basically him spewing out fire, the fire dragon's claw, with that attack, he lights up his foot and delivers a devastating kick and finally, the fire dragon's brilliant flame. This was his strongest attack. He lights up both hands and combines the flames into one. He increases the size of the ball and then throws it. When hitting the target, it explodes. He had yet to learn all of the basic ones, but learning those four was already impressive in only half a year. The beginning was the hardest, but when you get it down, learning the others was still difficult, but doable. During the half a year he had grown far stronger and was progressing nicely. Igniel had given him the task of destroying a huge boulder. And when he said huge, he meant huge. It was more than double the size of himself. Even worse, he was only allowed to use the fire dragon's iron fist. But he was sure that the others wouldn't have the power to destroy it either. Not counting the fire dragon's brilliant flame, the fire dragon's iron fist was still his strongest attack. Igniel had told him that it was impossible to master a dragon slayer technique. No matter how powerful it was, you could always increase its power. That was one of the reasons why dragon slayer magic is so strong. There is no limit as to how strong your attack could be. The blonde boy was getting angry now. He roared and hit the boulder again. He didn't feel how his rage increased his attack's power. Finally he gathered as much magic as he could into his fist. The flame around his right fist was as big as himself. He roared as loud as he could and struck the boulder. Finally it cracked and split. Naruto smiled but only realized how little magic he had left, he collapsed from exhaustion. That brat, Igniel chuckled to himself, he really did it. Igniel waited for Naruto to wake up, he still couldn't believe how much potential the boy had. Even during the dragon civil wars, there was only one man, that had enough power to actually kill a dragon. Others came close and disabled the dragons, destroying their wings and other body parts, but they were killed too. Dragons had always been victorious. Even his own students, couldn't slay a dragon. However this time, he felt like Naruto was going to exceed his expectations. He might actually become powerful enough. Igniel then shuddered. The boy even had the Kyubi inside of him. The power to slay a dragon and the power of the Kyubi. That was a scary thought. Before he could continue on he heard the blonde grumble. Congratulations, you did it. Igniel told him. I feel tired. The blonde coughed up. He stayed on the ground for a while. Did you feel it? The power surge? Igniel questioned. Power surge? He asked confused. Now that you mention it. Naruto was now seven years old and it was his third year with Igniel. It was summer and he would turn eight in autumn. He only had two months left before he would enroll in the academy. He had to get as much training done as possible. What am I learning today Igniel? He asked the large dragon. There are ten different basic dragon slayer spells. Naruto had already learned eight of them. Igniel told him that he would be learning the other two in a year's time. So he was really wondering what Igniel would teach him today. He said that they wouldn't focus on strengthening his spells in the last two months, so he wasn't sure what to expect. As he thought about strength, 
he couldn't help but remember what Igniel had shown him a month ago. Flashback, all right. The seven-year-old cheered. What am I learning today? I'm going to be showing you something today, the dragon answered. The dragon then flew them towards the next large mountain. I want you to see the difference in a human's dragon slayer magic and in a dragon's, he told him. What do you mean Igniel? Naruto asked confused. Instead the dragon just charged up his magic power inside his stomach. After a few seconds he then let the torrent of flames fly out of his mouth. The attack was huge. Naruto was slightly scared. That fire dragon's roar was more than 100 times bigger. Naruto's usually reached 20 meters, which was extremely impressive for a seven-year-old. Not kidding. The width of Naruto's attack at 10 meters was one and a half meters. But Igniel's, they were more than a kilometer away and the roar completely destroyed the mountain. It collapsed. Then there was Igniel's width of the attack. The attack was one kilometer long and around 250 meters wide. That that's insane. The blonde gaped. That's the power of a dragon. Never get cocky Naruto. Compared to a dragon you're a mere midge. Flashback end Igniel's strength was so amazing, one day he would be just as strong as Igniel. He promised himself that. Since then he had been practicing the fire dragon's roar every day more than he usually did. It already was stronger. All right brat. Igniel smirked. For the next two months, I want you to live in the jungle alone. W what? For two months, he wanted to make sure, he might have misheard after all. Yes. Was all that Igniel said. Naruto knew he was more than ready. He could take on a tiger, he knew it. He never tried of course, but considering he knew dragon slayer magic now. But it wasn't the tiger he was fearful of. That forest was more of a jungle and dangerous animals weren't the only problem. Diseases were also a huge problem. The Kyubi would probably be able to keep him alive but Naruto wouldn't be at his best of course. This time, he suddenly spoke. I will fly you even further in the jungle. Last time you were only surviving on the outskirts. The heart of the jungle is far worse than the outskirts. Countless dangerous animals, looking for easy prey. The blonde gulped. No, I can do this, he said to himself. All right, let me get my stuff and then we can leave. You won't be able to take everything. I'll allow you a backpack and one kanai nothing else. All right, that's fine by me. Naruto wasn't sure how far he was inside the jungle. He could only barely see the mountain. Igniel told him that he would come looking for him after the two months were over. He was supposed to shoot up a large fire dragon's roar in the sky when he saw Igniel. Igniel had also warned him about some kind of ancient civilization living in the jungle, whatever that meant. The first thing he was going to do is look for a good living spot. Igniel had taught him a lot about surviving in the past two years. He knew how to build a shelter, find the best spot, build tools and how to hunt, however he had the feeling that wildlife like deer would be extremely hard to find. He wasn't the only predator around after all. He started walking in a random direction. Naruto used his kanai to cut vines and other plants blocking his way. Any other person would have already complained because of the heat, however Naruto was a fire dragon slayer. he loved the heat. He was walking for a few minutes until he suddenly heard something behind him, he quickly spun around. Oh no you don't, he said darkly. There stood a jaguar, already pouncing on him. Naruto sidestepped the attack and lit his hand. Fire dragons, he shouted. Iron fist. He slammed his fist into the side of the jaguar. It howled in pain as it was brutally thrown for 10 meters until it hit a tree. Naruto went towards it and saw that it was still alive. He took out his kanai and slit its throat. He didn't want it to suffer anymore. He looked down at the animal and got an idea. All finished, he said as he took a look at the skinned animal. He had removed the hide. Now I only need to clean it with water and then I got myself a completely new coat. He smiled showing his fangs. His dragon slayer magic was starting to affect his body. He now bore fangs that were dangerously sharp. An. They have the same length as the ones he gets from the red Kyubi chakra. His eyes looked sharper and he was able to see further and better at night, his hearing was very sensitive now, that was how he managed to sense the jaguar. He had heard its paws touch the grass. His tongue's taste buds were more sensitive too and his body was more sturdy. However the sense that had improved the most was his smell. His grandfather said that his sense of smell was better than any Inazukas or dogs, he was very proud of that. 
Before he could start looking for a source of water, he sniffed the air. It seemed like there were more predators coming. They must have smelled the blood. Not wanting to fight that many, he quickly started running. Around water there always was this wet, refreshing smell. He concentrated on that and started taking off in a random direction. The problem was, that the rainforest was very humid too. That meant everything smelled wet. What smells like a river too? He asked. Ah, oh, I got it, fish. He closed his eyes and started sniffing the air. If anyone saw him, they would probably laugh their ass off. He then opened his eyes and smiled. That direction huh? As he got closer he picked up another smell. It smelled like water and blood. He was sure it was an animal, but he never smelled one like that before. When he arrived he looked around. It was a river flowing through the jungle. It wasn't big but wasn't small either. He didn't see any dangerous animal. He went to the river and started drinking. That's when his ear suddenly twitched and he jumped back. Camouflaging as a branch in the water was a crocodile. If he hadn't heard it move, his head would have been ripped off. He jumped back 10 meters by using chakra. He narrowed his eye. Lucky for him, crocodiles were slow on land. It looked like its scales were rather hard. But he was a dragon slayer. That magic was made to pierce a dragon's scales. This was the perfect opportunity. He had been trying to make his own dragon slayer attack for a few months now. Igniel had told him that one of his students already developed that technique a very long time ago. It was part of the custom dragon slayer magic. Those were spells that weren't taught by dragons. However, Igniel was only going to teach him those later on in life, as they only served small purposes. The one Naruto was learning in his very little free time was the fire dragon's piercing bullet. The boy held his fingers in a typical gun gesture and concentrated magic on his index finger. He didn't release it immediately and stored it. The crocodile was coming closer. Fire dragon's piercing bullet. He shouted as he let all of that pent up magic go. His hand recoiled slightly and a small bullet, made up of compressed fire hit the crocodile's head. A few seconds later and it would have gotten to Naruto. The crocodile collapsed and smoke started rising from the hole in its head. Looks like it's time for dinner, he said chuckling playfully. He carried the crocodile to a small clearing where he was going to build his shelter. He went to the nearest palm-like bushes and started taking off the large palm-like leaves. He did this for a while until he had enough and started cutting down small and thin trees with a stone he found on the ground. All right, now let's get started. Finished, the young boy yelled. He looked at his now finished cone-shaped teepee. Instead of hide, he had made it with bushes but he didn't mind. It was also very small but he was only seven, so it would be big enough for him. In the middle he had a campfire so he could cook the crocodile and stay warm at night. He had put the jaguar's hide on the floor. It didn't cover everything but there was enough space to sleep on. For the time being he would use the crocodile's hide, which was full of hard scales, as his coat. It did offer more protection than only a t-shirt. Let's see, the blonde thought out loud. I'll cut the crocodile into pieces and take the edible small parts into the teepee. More won't fit in. Just as he was finished cutting the crocodile, it started raining. He quickly ran inside his teepee. It wasn't the best built one, so a few water drops managed to get through but nothing much. He lit his finger and touched the campfire. The fire immediately started. Fire Dragon Slayer Magic's fire was far hotter than normal flames. Depending on how strong you were, the flames would get stronger. Igniel told him about his first apprentice, which only had to radiate magic power and stone would already melt. He would surpass all of Igniel's former apprentices and Igniel too. He put the meat on sticks and put these into the ground. The meat was hanging just above the flames. After a couple of minutes, the meat was ready. The blonde took one of the sticks and started eating the meat. It tastes like chicken, he said with his mouth full. It was barely understandable. When he finished his meals, he lay down on the jaguar hide and went to sleep. It was day four and so far there weren't any big complications. The blonde went out to hunt each day and fought multiple predators each day. He wasn't really able to spar with Igniel, because of his size, so the tigers and other predators were perfect for him to get some fighting experience. That was what he lacked the most. Hopefully he would be able to get some experience in the academy. Well probably not, those brats were weak after all. He wouldn't be allowed to fight at full strength anyway. Igniel told him to not go all out, even with taijutsu only. Apparently he didn't want Naruto to explain how he was so strong. 
he'd play dumb for the time being and then show the world who Uzumaki Naruto was. Naruto was currently wandering around, just exploring the jungle. In case something happened, he needed to know where he was. His sensitive ears picked up some animal creeping behind him. He made a finger pistol gesture and started charging his magic. He heard it come closer. From the scent, it was probably a cougar. He gathered enough magic in his fingertip and turned around. Fire dragon's piercing bullet. He shouted, shooting the fire bullet towards the cougar. He was already smirking, however much to his surprise, the cougar dodged the bullet. It growled at him. He then also realized, that the cougar was far bigger than any he had seen before. His face went pale. That piece of shit is just as big as an elephant, what the heck? The cougar growled at him and pounced. Shit. He swore as he rolled to the side. This would have been the perfect opportunity for a fire dragon's roar however. Charging the attack would take too long. He had to practice shortening the time. He shot towards the cougar, which turned around to face him. Fire dragon's claw. He roared and jumped. He slammed his right foot into the cougar's head. That take you overgrown cougar. A sidekick. The cougar stumbled to the side but managed to catch itself. It then roared at him and attacked. It tried hitting him with its sharp claws. The cougar was faster than he anticipated and only narrowly avoided getting his eyes scratched out. Son of A. He started but had to dodge another attack before he could finish. He started getting annoyed and jumped back with chakra. The cougar watched him. It wouldn't fall for the same trick again. The blonde coated his lungs in dragon slayer magic and started building up a large amount of fire. The cougar saw this as a chance to attack because the boy just suddenly stopped. Naruto inhaled a large amount of air and then bellowed, fire dragon's roar. Just before the cougar could reach him, a large wave of fire erupted from his mouth, blasting the cougar away. He held the attack for another three seconds and then stopped. This had been his most powerful roar up to now. The boy coughed. He almost fell down but put his hands on his knees for help. As he looked up, the cougar lay on the ground, completely brown and black from the intense heat. D damn. He huffed. I used up half of my magic container, I better get back. By now he knew the way back to his teepee. However when he arrived, he was furious, it was gone. The whole area was thrashed and his teepee in pieces. The blonde narrowed his eyes. There's no way, an animal could have done that, no unintelligent animal anyway. Something intelligent must have done this, he thought out loud. He crouched down and looked at the footprints. It looked like an eagle's, or falcon's only far bigger. He doubted that it was one of the two, simply because there wasn't enough space for a large predator bird to live in the jungle. The footprints also reminded him of a crocodile's. But there were only two, not four. Meaning that they walked on two feet and not four. Didn't Igniel say something about ancient civilization? He said out loud, he had to be on guard at all times now. He sniffed the footprints, they smelled like lizard. Damn bastards. There was only enough time to build a hut with a roof. It had no walls. It was a good thing, that he was a fire dragon slayer. He didn't even feel the cold. He couldn't wait to go look for those, lizards. Which destroyed his makeshift home. He would fry them alive and maybe eat them. Who knew? Maybe they'd taste good. Naruto woke up when the sun hit his closed eyes. He opened them and the blue-eyed boy got a look of determination on his face. The weird lizard-like creatures would probably be looking for him. They only found his home, but not him. He got up and had a few berries for breakfast. Time to kill some lizards. Without a plan Naruto ventured through the jungle. He sniffed the air every 30 seconds. So far he hadn't found anything yet. Those damn bastards. He couldn't wait to fight them. However he had to be careful too. There must have been a reason for Igniel to warn him. He shouldn't just fight them head on. Maybe he could practice his stealth skills. He was suddenly brought out of his musing when he smelled something reptilian-like. A lizard, he immediately took off into the direction it was coming from. They were 500 meters away. Naruto stopped 50 meters away from their position and climbed a tree using chakra. He then jumped through the trees with the help of chakra. He finally saw them. It was a group of five, he had never seen such creatures before. Their scales were light blue in color and just like with Igneo, the inside meaning the belly or etc., was a lighter color. Creamy white in their case. Their shoulders were a darker blue. They had weird fins on the top of their head and some war necklaces. 
All of them had a spear in their right hand and a brown shield in their other hand. They all walked on two feet and were slightly crouched over. One was slightly taller than the others and had more armor covering him. Only a breastplate though. They were talking in some weird language. It contained a lot of hisses. It seemed like they had an argument to Naruto. He then saw one carrying jaguar hide. His eyes narrowed. Those were the ones that destroyed his teepee. He wanted to rush in and fight them, however he didn't know how strong they were and if there were any reinforcements nearby. I'll follow them and strike while they are asleep, the blonde planned. The blonde had followed the creatures for the past seven hours and it seemed like they were setting up camp. Seven hours of being on guard and suppressing your presence were hideous. He waited another hour, because they still had dinner. One lizard man, which he decided to call them, was on guard. This should be easy, the blonde muttered. Let's start. Naruto jumped down from the tree and started sneaking towards the camp. In the middle was the campfire and around it, lay four sleeping lizard men. The other was patrolling, ten meters away from the others. If it were a human, the blonde would have just thrown the kanai and slit the person's throat, however he didn't know how strong the lizard man's scales were so he sneaked towards him from behind. When he was behind him, he coated his hand in fire, which alerted the lizard man, but before he could say anything, his windpipe was brutally crushed. Its throat made a sickening noise, but the other lizard men didn't wake up. He then broke its neck, releasing it from the pain. The rest was quick work. He went to the others and killed them as well. He then sighed and sat down. The blue lizard men were now red. He then realized. He had killed. Those lizard men might have not been humans but they were intelligent creatures. Just like humans. Naruto felt sick after that revelation and threw up. He had killed, for the first time. And this is part one of the jungle adventure. The next chapter will be part two and then Naruto will be enrolled in academy. Naruto woke up the next morning, with the stench of blood on his hands. Sometimes, he did wish he wouldn't have such a sensitive nose. This was one of those times. Last night he had killed. It might have been lizard men but he still killed an intelligent being. This was completely different than killing an animal. He couldn't describe the feeling he felt that moment. Only those, who already took a life, would understand it. That disgusting feeling that washed over your entire body. Naruto decided he didn't like killing, but it was necessary. When he would become a shinobi, killing would be his income. He had to get used to it. He quickly shook his head, there was no time for this. Without a doubt there were more lizard men in this jungle. He was also sure, that not all of them were going to be so easy to take out like he had done with the group of five. Considering, it was an ancient civilization, some might even be able to use magic. Of course, this was only a suspicion he had, but he had a feeling that he would find out sooner or later. Something did feel off with this jungle. He went back to the lizard men's camp and quickly salvaged the most important things. Well, they didn't really have anything except for some animal hide, which they would have slept on. Naruto couldn't bear to sleep next to the stench of those corpses, so he had slept a bit further away. He didn't know what to do now. It was only day five. Not even a week was over yet. However he did know, that he would need a new shelter. Naruto would have to start from scratch. There was nothing left of his old shelter after all. The boy also decided that it would be better, if he were to build a new shelter in a different location. The lizard men had most likely, reported back to their tribe, before destroying his base. They knew they weren't the only intelligent life form inside the jungle now, but so did he. Naruto had quickly found a new location for a shelter. It was a very small cave, stretching inside a small hill for about 7 meters. He had his sleeping spot at the very back with a campfire. By far it wasn't as cozy as his and Igniel's cave, but it had to do. It also didn't offer any protection from enemies, as the entrance was rather big and you could see Naruto from the outside as well. After he had set everything up, he had gone outside and looked for some easy prey. It was starting to get dark already. He had spent the entire day looking for a shelter. Perfect. Naruto whispered. A small monkey was sitting on one of the trees, a few meters away. He decided to go for the easy kill and threw his kanai. It hit the monkey in its throat and effectively killed it within seconds. It toppled forward and fell down the tree. He pulled out the kanai and picked the monkey up and went back to his cave. When he came back however, he didn't expect a lizard man inside it. It looked more like a scout, seeing that it didn't have a shield or any other possessions than a spear. 
It was also smaller and had fewer muscles than the ones he had fought before. He had to keep calm. If he alerted it, it would maybe call its reinforcements. Naruto hated the fact that he would need to kill again, but it had to be done. It had found his new cave. The blonde charged up a fire dragon's piercing bullet and took aim. The lizard men quickly spun around and noticed him. Before it could cry for help, Naruto shot it in its head. It slumped over and fell to the ground. He narrowed his eyes. It had somehow managed to sense him. It had spun around only seconds after he charged up his attack. Either it had felt his killing intent he must have accidentally released or his magic power. He doubted that it was his killing intent because even though he wasn't a ninja yet, he knew how to suppress it when assassinating a target. He wouldn't have been able to hunt all of those animals if he didn't. It seemed that these creatures did no magic. Considering how he hadn't woken up the other lizardmen the day before when using it, they only felt it to some degree. In addition to that, they were asleep too. His survival would be a lot harder now. Arg! Naruto shouted as he punched a lizard man in his face. Damn bastards! It was his last four days in the hellish jungle. Only four more days and Igniel would come and pick him up. The kid already knew the part of the jungle he stayed in, like the back of his hand. The past three weeks had been harsh. Each day there was at least one lizardman attack. Thankfully, they were all weak compared to him and were beaten with some effort. Naruto had to find a new shelter every three days. After getting enough information, they would send around 50 lizardmen to his temporary shelter. Naruto was strong, but not strong enough to take down that many. Groups of 10 were no problem, but more than that was too much for the young boy to handle. How many bloody lizardmen live in this goddamn jungle? He cried out. Naruto got used to killing now. Of course he still felt bad after taking a life, but he didn't feel as sick anymore. The jungle really pushed Naruto's mental health to the max. Another month and he might turn crazy. He sighed and looked around. His clothes were tattered and he was dirty. The blonde had gotten more muscles and had an impressive build for a seven-year-old. His canines had gotten longer and sharper too. According to Igneo, they were probably fully grown now. Naruto asked the dragon how big they would become when he realized them grow bigger. His blonde hair had gotten longer too now. It grew into every direction and was very wild now. An. Google, Natsu after time skip, for a detailed picture of his hair. This was the fourth ambush today, he thought. They're becoming restless. I have a bad feeling about this. Naruto suddenly heard a stick break and spun around. His eyes narrowed. Nobody was there. Must have been my imagination. He shrugged. He tried sniffing the air but covered it again almost instantly. The scent of corpses blocked out all other smells. He frowned and started walking towards the nearest river, he had gotten thirsty. When he arrived at the river, he checked that there were no enemies in the vicinity and started drinking. He took a break and wiped his mouth. The water was very refreshing and gave him new energy. Naruto was about to take another gulp, when he suddenly felt danger. He jumped to his left and dodged spear made entirely of light by only a few centimeters. Who's there? He shouted as he sniffed the air. He stopped sniffing as he dodged a small light beam. It gave a loud explosion and a crater formed. Naruto cursed and turned around. On the river behind him stood a lizard man. He wore tribal wear and a lot of accessories made with feathers. He also wore a headpiece made with a lot of different colored feathers. Other than that, he looked like the ones he had battled before. It started speaking in a weird and ancient language, however what shocked the boy was that he actually understood it. Hello intruder. The lizard man spoke. You killed quite a lot of our soldiers. You see, my leader doesn't like that, so he sent me to kill you. Naruto panicked and was extremely confused. The language doesn't sound like the one the other lizard men use. How come I can understand it? Who the hell are you? He shouted. I don't understand your language young one, however it seems like you can understand me. Interesting. Your dragon must have not taught you dragonic. He answered arrogantly. The blonde clenched his teeth. He was so confused. Shit. I'm getting nervous. Stay calm. Stay calm. Stay calm. Remember what Igniel taught you and you will win. He thought, repeating the mantra. You are strong for your age. The lizard man snarled. However I'm stronger. I am more trained in the area of magic. Before the boy could answer, the lizard man chanted a spell and shot multiple small bright beams at him. 
he dodged four, until the fifth hit him and blasted him back. Naruto crashed into a thick tree and collapsed. F fuck you, he managed to say as he coughed, he wiped away a trail of blood from his mouth and stood up. Oh, you can still stand, interesting, the lizard man smiled creepily. Naruto checked his body and sighed from relief. Nothing was broken or bruised. He got into his fighting stance and made a gesture for the lizard man to attack. Let's see how much stronger you are, compared to those other weaklings. The lizard man tsked and chanted again. Seeing that Naruto couldn't understand him anymore, he must have swapped back to the weird lizard man language. The enemy mage finished chanting and shot bright bullets from his fingers like Naruto did with his magic. Naruto sped forwards with the help of Chakra, slightly surprising the lizard man and dodged the bullets. He was now in front of the lizard man and bent down. Naruto shot up again and delivered a flaming uppercut. Fire Dragon's Iron Fist. The lizard man flew backwards, he eventually landed on the ground and kept on rolling for a few seconds. Hey, your magic might be stronger than mine, but it seems like your taijutsu is non existent. I do have a chance after all. He smirked and cracked his fingers. I'm a beat show ass. The lizard man growled as he got up. He couldn't understand the language that the blonde was speaking in, but he knew that he had insulted him. You damn brat, he roared. Naruto used his chakra again and propelled himself to his enemy. However, before he could deliver a punch, the lizard man used a spell and Naruto's fist slammed against a light shield. Fuck, he swore as he held his now hurt right hand. That's hard as shit. Naruto spit out blood as suddenly a fist made of light magic punched him in the stomach. He flew backwards but managed to stop by skidding with his feet. That hurt bastard. He chuckled. Naruto's expression turned slightly animalistic. You're strong. Naruto bent slightly backwards. Fire dragons, he roared as a huge torrent of fire flew towards his enemy. Roar. The lizard man paled slightly but started chuckling darkly. My magic shield is stronger extremely durable. That spell won't pierce it. The huge torrent of fire crashed into his light shield. The shield's defensive power seemed too strong enough to handle the destructive power of a fire dragon's roar. See that? The lizard man started laughing hysterically. You're weak and I'm strong. The roar eventually vanished and the lizard man was expecting a panting Naruto, however he was gone. With a flame on the right hand, the lizard man heard behind him, and a flame on the left hand. The lizard man paled as he felt the magic pressure. He had already dispelled his light shield and it would take too long to make another one. When you combine the flames together. Naruto roared as he slammed his hands together and a huge fireball formed. Fire dragon's brilliant flame. He roared and threw the massive fireball, 5 meters in height and width, towards the lizard man. The fireball exploded on contact and the lizard man roared in pain as he got burned alive. After a few seconds of wailing. He collapsed and the flames died down. Naruto looked at the burned and charred body of the mage and fell to his knees. He panted hard. I used all of my magic in that last attack. I'm lucky he underestimated me, otherwise, it might have ended differently. He thought out loud tiredly. Only three more days and one night. He looked around as it got dark. He sighed and started looking for a shelter. Ten minutes later, you changed, brat. Igneal rumbled. As promised, Igneal had come and Naruto had signaled his position. Hum? What do you mean? Of course I got stronger, Naruto answered shouting at Igneal. It was like hell after all. I wasn't only talking about your strength, you seem more mature and you feel different, Igneal told him. Huh, really? Weird, he said blinking at Igneal. How was your first kill? You feeling okay? Igneal asked with some worry. How did you know? You reek of blood and insides, brat. Figures. He said, sighing. It was okay. I think I handled it okay. That's good to hear. I'm proud of you. Igneal said, smiling at him. His son had taken his first life and stayed strong. Warmth spread inside his chest as he looked at Naruto. The blonde climbed on his back and lay down. I'm tired, dad. He muttered as he was about to fall asleep. Rest, my son. Both, dragon and human, smiled at those words and Naruto quickly fell asleep. A small tear fell from his eye. If he hadn't been that tired, he probably would have cried for ages. He finally had, a father. Alright class, settle down. 
A Chunin from Konoha spoke as he arrived at his classroom. He had brown hair, tied back in a ponytail and black eyes. His most prominent feature was a large scar, going over his nose horizontally. He went towards his desk and started getting irritated. Finally, when he had three tick marks, he shouted, Be quiet. This seemed to do the trick as everyone went to his, her seat and sat down. We're getting a new student, so be quiet, first impressions matter, after all. Okay, you can come in now, Uruka said, turning his head to the door. It opened and a boy, tall for his age walked in. He stopped next to Uruka and looked at his new classmates. He wore shinobi sandals, black shorts and an orange t-shirt with a black uzumaki spiral on it. He was quite muscular for his age, but nothing extreme. The boy had three whisker-like markings on each cheek and ocean blue eyes. His hair was medium length, with spikes pointing in every direction and two long bangs on either side of his face. The blonde wore a huge grin. My name is Uzumaki Naruto, nice to meet you, he exclaimed loudly. The class was silent for a few seconds until the first few greeted him. Isn't that the boy, my mother said was bad? A pink-haired girl thought. Like her, around half of the class thought the same. Sit down on any free chair you see. Uruka said looking at Naruto. He wasn't sure if he would get along with the boy. The Kayubi, that was sealed inside Naruto, killed his parents, seven and a half years ago. However the Hokage said, that the kid was a very nice boy, so he would judge after he would get to see more of his personality. The blonde made his way towards a seat in the back, he looked at the girl with lavender hair and white eyes. Y'all mind if I sit here? And no it's f fine. Yo you can s sit here. She answered shyly, only looking at Naruto for a split second. Thank a lot. What's your name? He asked, smiling at her as he sat down. The girl looked at him in surprise. Hanada. Hanada, huh? You seem nice, let's be friends, he smiled brightly. Before she could answer, the teacher looked at them. It's nice you already found a friend Naruto, however I would like to start the lesson. Yay yay, sure. Naruto waved his hand in a disinterested way. Uruka gained a tick mark. T this brat, Naruto was bored out of his mind. He already knew everything the teacher was talking about. He couldn't wait to swap with his shadow clone. He learned the jutsu a few days ago, together with the Hokage. Thinking about that moment, made him smile. The old man really was precious to him. Naruto then thought about the moment where he had used his legendary jutsu, the sexy jutsu. He had to stifle a laugh as he remembered how he had knocked the Hokage out. He was suddenly interrupted and opened his eyes. In front of him stood Uruka. Are my lesions really that funny Naruto? He asked narrowing his eyes at the blonde. Naruto was about to say that he already knew everything, however Igniel had forbidden him from showing anything he had learned. That bastard of a father. Naruto then looked uninterested at Uruka. Did you say something Uruka-sensei? Somewhere in Konoha, an Anbu looked up from his Icha Icha book and smiled underneath his mask. I'm incredibly proud right now, he said satisfied, but why? He then pondered. Naruto, to the hallway, now, he barked at him. Naruto looked at Uruka and sighed. Hi hi. An. Sorry again for the lack of chapters the past week. Hopefully, there isn't a bug this time. Finally, Naruto shouted, excitedly, graduation. The past years were hell for Naruto. He could only spend a limited amount of time with Igneo, because of the ninja academy. He was finally free. No need to hide his strength from his classmates any further and no more losing on purpose. He hated Sasuke's smug look after. Winning. Against him. No more of that. He was going to show that prick. Naruto got up from his bed, lay his sleeping hat on the bed and went to the kitchen. I'm going to treat myself today, he said excitedly and got out a cup of instant ramen from the cupboard. He put it in the microwave and opened the fridge. Naruto then poured himself a glass of milk and set the timer for the microwave. The blonde took a large gulp from his milk before looking down at it, his face turning more and more green by the passing second. What the hell? He cried out and rushed to the sink to spit it out. He put the glass of milk away and took a look at the carton. Best before. He read out aloud. That was a month ago. Good that I didn't drink any more of that. Could have given me diarrhea. After breakfast, Naruto quickly got on himself and slipped on his goggles. He then smiled. Today is the day I become a real ninja. 
The day I've been training for since years. His smile then went away. I'll have to get serious from now on. He lifted up his hand and clenched it. I'm getting all fired up now, he shouted and smashed his now flame covered hand into his palm. The way to school was as uneventful as always. As he walked down the streets, most people didn't pay attention to him. However, there were a few which glared at him. I'll show them. He took another turn and arrived at the school building. Good luck with your exam today. He heard parents wish their children. Everyone was brought to school by their parents today. Naruto snorted and ignored them. He didn't want them to ruin his day. Damn lizard. He swore. You're far too big. He opened the school's doors and made his way to his classroom. When he arrived at his classroom, he saw that he was one of the first to arrive. A few kids whose names he didn't know were talking about some kind of new video game. Another two girls were swooning over the rookie of the year, Sasuke. The raven haired boy was sitting on one of the central benches and gave off an air of arrogance. Naruto passed the boy and went to the back of the classroom. He sat down on one of the empty chairs in the corner and soon snoozed off. Naruto. Ah! Naruto cried out. What the hell, sensei? I was sleeping. Uruka was used to this attitude by now and just shook his head. You're so much work, Naruto. It's your turn for the graduation test. Naruto scratched the back of his head and followed Uruka. Naruto ignored the other children's whispers and realized that he was the last to take the test. Everyone wore a headband. So I'm the last to take the test, sensei? He asked Uruka as they went into the separate graduation test room. Instead of getting an answer, Uruka sat down next to the other teacher, Mizuki. All right, Naruto, Mizuki started. Please show us the three jutsu needed to pass. He then took out a kanai. Let's start with the Kawarimi no jutsu. Tell me when you're ready. I'm ready, sensei. Naruto told the white haired chunin. Mizuki nodded and threw the kanai. Kawarimi no jutsu. Naruto shouted, and just as the kanai hit him, the blonde was replaced with a chair. Uruka nodded and started writing something down. Good Naruto. Now the henge please. The boy was tempted to use his oiroke no jutsu but decided against it. He had to stay serious, no matter how easy these jutsu were. He performed the necessary hand seals and transformed into a perfect version of Uruka. Easy, sensei, he said. Uruka gave Naruto a big smile before he grimaced. The next jutsu is the bunshin no jutsu. I hope you trained a lot for this one. Don't worry sensei, I got this. Naruto smirked. He spread his feet slightly and brought both his hands up into a cross. Uruka's and Mizuki's eyes widened. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Naruto said, cheekily and ten clones burst into existence. How's this sensei? One of the clones asked, smirking. Why you pass Naruto? But the Cage Bunshin no Jutsu is a forbidden Jutsu. It can kill the user, who taught it to you. Uruka shouted, confused. Besides no academy student should have the amount of chakra to make ten of those, Jonin can barely make that many, Mizuki added. Don't worry, the Hokage taught me the jutsu. I'm just that awesome, Naruto exclaimed proudly. See congratulations Naruto, you've become a real ninja, Naruto stammered as he gave Naruto his headband. Mizuki watched this exchange and narrowed his eyes. There's no way an academy student should have that much chakra. This must be the damn Kayubi's doing. I don't get how Uruka can be so nice to that demon, Mizuki thought. Thanks, Sensei. Naruto exclaimed excitedly. The blonde tied the headband around his head. Now I'm a real ninja. Yeah, Uruka smiled. Ichiraku ramen on me tonight. Yes. Naruto couldn't believe it, he was finally a ninja. He was finally able to show the world his power and make the villagers acknowledge him. Naruto had only felt this happy once before in his life. The day Igniel had basically adopted him. The blonde couldn't wait to show Igniel his headband. The said boy was skipping down one of the alleyways when he suddenly heard someone shout his name. He turned around and was surprised to see Mizuki. Yes, sensei? Naruto asked him, confused. This is bound to work, the demon may know the cage bunshin but his written scores were still the worst from his class. He's an idiot. Mizuki evilly thought. Congratulations on passing the exam and becoming a real ninja Naruto. He smiled at the boy. Um, thanks sensei. Naruto tilted his head. This might sound weird, but I was really impressed with your display earlier. Mizuki started explaining. 
and there is actually a way for you to become Rookie of the Year. So far only two other students were allowed to take this test. Rookie of the Year? Reli Sensei? Naruto shouted in disbelief, a test? That's right Naruto, a test for only the best candidates, are you interested? Mizuki asked him. Of course Sensei. What do I need to do? It's very simple. You only need to manage bringing the old big scroll in the Hokage Tower to the forest east from here and learn one of the techniques. Of course you're not allowed to get caught. The scroll is called, the scroll of seals. Mizuki said convincingly. That idiot is bound to fall for it. All right sensei, I'll take the extra exam, Naruto told Mizuki full of determination. I'm sure you'll become rookie of the year, Naruto, see you in the forest at midnight. Mizuki nodded and shushined away. Naruto just stared at where Mizuki stood a few seconds ago. Does everyone really think I'm that dumb? He asked himself sulking and a dark cloud appearing. Guess I'll go to the Hokage Gigi, the dark cloud above his head never went away. So you're telling me Mizuki, the academy teacher is planning on stealing the scroll of seals with your help, without you knowing? Yes. And he thought that you would be that dumb to not realize that this is a trap? UHU. And now you want me to give you a fake scroll in order to apprehend Mizuki? Yup. The old Hokage sighed and started massaging his temples. I'm really getting too old for this job, he moaned. Don't worry old man, I'll take that hat in no time, the blonde boy grinned. I hope so Naruto, I hope so, Hiruzen started laughing. Very well. I'll give you a fake scroll of seals and an in-ear headset, so you can communicate with me. Enbu will be surrounding the air as well. Thanks Gigi, I'll show that guy, Naruto said, cracking his fingers. The Hokage narrowed his eyes. Do not forget, I wouldn't allow you to do this if you hadn't been trained in Dragon Slayer magic. Without it, you wouldn't be able to beat Mizuki. You will have to use his surprise as an advantage, otherwise my Anbu will have to interfere, he said sternly. I understand Hokage-sama, Naruto replied nodding, this will be my first test as a ninja. The Hokage grunted, I've never heard of a ninja planning to fight a chunin on his first day as a genin. Good luck Naruto, he wished him, I'm Uzumaki Naruto, Dadbeo. I don't need luck, he replied cheekily, I'll deal with the traitor. Naruto turned around and left the room with the fake scroll of seals, this is it. I finally get to test my strength against another ninja. A ninja which is theoretically stronger and has more experience. But then again. I don't think other ninja fight against a huge dragon almost daily. Naruto's heart started pounding faster and faster, not because of fear, but because of excitement. He couldn't wait for that adrenaline flash he got while fighting. He loved the last one against the weird lizard man a few years ago. Now he was 12, ready to take on the world. The boy sealed away the fake scroll and made his way to Ichiraku Ramen. After a few minutes of walking he arrived at the stall. Uruka wasn't there yet. Hey Ayame. He greeted the girl. She was wearing her typical cooking wear. Naruto-kun. You passed the graduation exam, she shouted noticing the headband. Yay. He tried answering but got cut off. Naruto, you already look far mature, I'm so proud of you. Tucci shouted bursting out from the back of the stall. Miso ramen on the house. Yes. I was getting hungry waiting for Aruka anyway. Naruto laughed. He suddenly felt a chill and someone behind him. You weren't planning on starting without me, were you Naruto? Aruka asked in a sickly sweet way. Oh of course not Aruka sensei. I was only joking, he laughed nervously. Aruka then smiled. Well done Naruto, we're almost equals now. I can't wait for the day you turn Chunin. Naruto looked at Uruka and a few tears started falling from his eyes. Thank you so much Uruka sensei. For everything. He cried out and hugged Uruka. Uruka's eyes softened as he pulled Naruto closer. Now don't cry Naruto. He laughed. You're like a younger brother I never had. A far younger one at that. Naruto pulled back and smiled at the man. He couldn't wait to tell him later on how he beat Mizuki to a pulp. He'd probably be so surprised that he'd fall unconscious. Naruto snickered. It was almost midnight when Naruto arrived at the forest with the fake scroll. He waited for a couple of minutes until he suddenly smelt something. He sniffed the air and sure enough, Mizuki was heading his way. He stood up and pretended to be an innocent child again, like he had earlier. 
Mizuki shushined into the clearing and smiled at Naruto. Well done Naruto, give me the scroll and then I'll start the exam. Okay, sensei. Naruto threw the fake scroll to Mizuki. When Mizuki caught the scroll he was quiet for a while. Something wrong sensei? Naruto asked him. Suddenly Mizuki started chuckling. It got louder and faster until it was an evil laugh straight from a horror movie. You idiot! He screamed maniacally. There is no exam for rookie of the year. You fell for my plan and stole the scroll of seals for me. W what do you mean sensei? Naruto asked fearfully, taking a few steps back. Damn I could have become an actor. I tricked you and now I'm going to kill you, and do you know why, demon? H huh, what sensei? What are you d doing? Demon? Naruto shouted back. Those damn eyes, I hate them, how they look at me. That's right. The reason why everyone hates you. A rule was made, that everyone except for you knows. You're the demon fox that attacked the village twelve years ago, Mizuki shouted hysterically. Naruto looked down, his hair covering his eyes. Can't take the truth demon. No worries, I'll kill you and free you. The blonde clenched his hands but then let them fall to his sides. The demon went crazy, Mizuki thought, laughing out loud. You w what? Mizuki asked, shocked. He planned on crushing Naruto's resolve by telling him of the fox, but he never had thought that Naruto would already know. Doesn't matter, I'll kill you anyway. Naruto grinned, his body shaking with excitement. Bring it on, Datbeo. Mizuki narrowed his eyes and jumped down the tree. He rushed towards Naruto, confident that he could easily beat him. The chunin took out a kunai and started swinging it at Naruto. Naruto, in retaliation, took out his own kunai and started parrying the attacks. After a few parries, Mizuki lifted his right leg and prepared to kick Naruto into his side. Naruto quickly guarded his left, but didn't expect Mizuki to suddenly stab with the kunai. The kunai went through Naruto's chest and Mizuki grinned. I shouldn't have expected more from the dead last. To Mizuki's surprise, Naruto started grinning as well. The boy suddenly popped into smoke. Don't underestimate me bastard. Naruto roared from behind Mizuki. The white-haired man spun around, ready to block Naruto's attack, but to his surprise there were around 20 Narutos. W what? Mizuki shouted, shocked. The first Naruto punched Mizuki in the face. The other clones soon followed and started beating up Mizuki as well. There was another poof and a log appeared in Mizuki's place. H how? The average Jonin can't make that many, he shouted at the clones. He then brought his hand to his face and cracked his nose back into place. I'm still a Chunin though. A mere Genin won't be able to beat me, no matter how many clones he can make. He exclaimed, pushing away his fear. Don't worry, Cage Bunshin aren't my only trump card. Naruto said Kami Shun shining next to Mizuki. The Chunin stumbled back in surprise as Naruto appeared. Mizuki had enough of it and started weaving hand signs for the Kaden Gokaku no just you. Kaden Gokaku no Jutsu, he shouted, arrogantly. Naruto started at the huge fireball coming his way. How boring, he muttered to himself. The demon is frozen with fear, everything earlier on was only a fluke. The giant RNG red fireball hit Naruto and exploded. The clearing they were fighting in was lit up. Die demon, Mizuki sneered at the fiery explosion. Suddenly the fire started to get less and less, it was like something was sucking it up. All color drained from Mizuki's face. Inside the huge fire, Naruto was standing seemingly sucking in the flames with his mouth. Thanks for the meal. Naruto said wiping his mouth, ye bastard. Mizuki wanted to fall unconscious, he really did, but if he did that, it would be game over. Visiting the T&I department was not on the list of things he wanted to do. But he had never seen something like this before. Someone eating fire? Unheard of. Naruto grinned at his former sensei's shocked look as he ate the fire. He then started gathering magic at his hands, setting them on fire. The flames vibrated strongly, mimicking his emotions. Fire dragon slayer magic comes from the heart, Igniel always said. It mimics your emotions, the stronger they are the stronger your attacks. And right now, Naruto was only feeling anger. He rushed to the still stunned Shunin, who looked like he was going to pass out any second now, and punched him in the face. Fire Dragon's Iron Fist. Mizuki flew backwards, 
crashing into a tree. He groaned and tried getting up. That damn Kyubi. And to finish it. Fire dragons roar. Naruto said dangerously. A huge fire torrent burned through everything, nothing stopping it from incinerating Mizuki. The painful screams made Naruto cringe and realize that Mi might have overdone it. The fight hadn't even costed him hauled of his magic nor chakra either. I defeated the traitor, Hokage-sama. He said through his mic. Hokage-sama? He asked as he received no answer. Oh, it isn't fireproof. I still can't believe you managed to beat Mizuki without receiving any injuries. The Hokage chuckled, shaking his head. To be honest, he was pretty shocked about my cage bunshin. After that I showed him my magic and I guess it was too much for him to handle. Naruto shrugged. I was pretty shocked when I saw your magic for the first time as well, if he wasn't a traitor I might have felt bad for him, the Hokage mused. Oh, at the end I might have overdone it a bit. Is Mizuki alive? Naruto asked. When my medic nin found him he was covered in burns. I decided to try and save his life in order to find out if he worked alone or if he had a partner. However I doubt that he will pull through. At least the Yamanakas might be able to pull something from his brain. The Hokage answered. Naruto looked down. Even though he had beaten Mizuki he had messed up. Next time I won't overdo it, I promise. Naruto shouted confidently and smiled at the man. Don't be too harsh on yourself Naruto-kun. You only just started your career as a ninja. I doubt that many others could say that they beat a chunin within hours of graduating. I guess so. I'll go home now Gigi. Night. Naruto saluted and shunshined away. It was the first day after graduation. Naruto slowly woke up and rubbed his eyes. He now had a holiday for a week. After that he would get assigned a team with two other students and a Jonin sensei. He couldn't wait to show the world who he was. Like always he made himself some breakfast, drank some milk and did his morning training routine. All right, he shouted, finishing his last push-up. Time to show Igneal my forehead protector and tell him about my epic battle. Naruto was excited to show Igneal his forehead protector. Igneal was like a father to him and making Igneal proud was one of the things he loved doing. Who knows, maybe Igneal had some kind of present for him. He couldn't wait seeing that overgrown lizard. Naruto finally arrived at the cave where he first met the dragon. It was close by the village and Naruto had been wondering while he had been training with the dragon, how come Igneal hadn't been spotted by others yet? Apparently living for multiple thousands of years had its benefits and Igneal had learned a powerful genjutsu. The reason why Igneal had been attacked once or twice by missing Nin was because he had to recharge the powerful genjutsu. Naruto later learned that he only met the dragon because the Kyubi was strong enough to break the genjutsu. Igneal, he shouted. I did it. The blonde started sprinting down the cave, illuminating it with a flame in his right hand. He made it into Igneal's huge living space and smiled at the enormous dragon. Naruto pointed towards his head. Hello Naruto. So you're a ninja now, an adult. Igneal smiled at the boy. Yeah, finally. Now I'm one step closer to my dream. Becoming Hokage. The boy exclaimed excitedly jumping up and down. I've prepared a nice feast for us. Roasted deer, sheep, cow and bear. Dig in Naruto. Afterwards I'll give you my present. Igneal rumbled happily. So he had been right. Igneal really had gotten him a present. Yes. Thank you dad. The two of them ate and laughed together. Naruto even drank some sake for the first time in his life. This was the most fun he had ever had with his surrogate father. And then Uruka sensei shouted at me. Naruto laughed. Really? Igneal laughed out, struggling to breath. Yeah, it was so funny. He turned really red from embarrassment. Ha ha ha. Igneal laughed, his voice causing a few rocks to fall from the ceiling. I think it's time to give you your present. Really, really? Yay. Naruto cheered, jumping to his feet. What is it? Now now Naruto, don't be so hasty, they're in the box over there, Igneal told Nerut. He then pointed to a chest in the corner with his claw. All right. Naruto shouted, running to the chest. He opened it and saw multiple presents. The first one was a Tonto sword, which blade was double as long as its hilt. The hilt was dark black in color and the blade was a dark red, the exact same shade as Igneal's scales. The blade was also made from a scaly-like material. Naruto looked at the Tonto in amazement. It's beautiful. 
Of course it is, it's made from my scales. That Tonto won't ever break. Igniel boasted. I decided on gifting you a Tonto because it's far easier learning all the techniques than with a katana. Naruto turned back to the box and put the Tonto into its midnight black sheath. He then looked at the other presents. He noticed all of the others were clothes. He took out a pair of black and orange combat boots from the chest and set them next to him. The next clothing article were a pair of baggy, orange and black pants. He looked at the t-shirt which was black and had an Uzumaki swirl in orange on the front of it. This is so amazing Igniel. However his jaw dropped when he saw the long coat, also known as a Howry. It reached down to his calves and was scarlet, entirely made from Igniel's scales with Uzumaki, in orange writing on the back of it. On the left upper part of the arm, above the biceps it had the Uzumaki swirl on it. The Howry was short-sleeved and went down to his elbow. On the inside it was black. T this is incredible Igniel. Naruto shouted turning back to the dragon. He ran towards him and jumped on his snout. I love you so much, he cried out, tears falling from his eyes. Presents were a rare thing for him after all and to have gotten something so incredible was amazing. Haha, ha, I'm the best dad, no, Igniel sounded proud. There's still something else in the chest Naruto, two things in fact. Naruto quickly jumped down and looked into the chest again. Like Igniel said, there were two things left, he took out a silver locket and put it on. The locket hung down to the central part of his chest. He opened the locket and inside was a picture of him sitting on Igniel's snout, laughing. He must have been around eight when this picture was taken. Thank you Igniel. The locket was as big as the upper part of his thumb. Naruto then took out the last present, it was a scaly headband. He quickly noticed what it was for and took off his current blue headband for his forehead protector. He put his forehead protector on his new scarlet, scaly headband and tied it around his head. For a headband it was quite long and reached to the back of his head, he then proceeded to put on his new clothes. So, how'd I look, like a badass, Naruto asked Igniel grinning. You look like a fire dragon king's son, Igniel roared. My scales will make it impossible for Kanai to pierce through your haori. Of course they're fireproof as well. Wow, did you do all of this on your own? Naruto asked amazed. Of course not, I merely provided the scales. Your Hokage brought the materials to the best tailors to make the clothes and a famous blacksmith from the land of iron crafted that Tonto. Wow, does the Tonto have a name? Naruto asked, amazed at all the trouble Igniel and the Hokage went through. Not yet. It's for you to decide. Naruto unsheathed the Tonto from his back and looked at it. Oh and I almost forgot, you can channel your magic through that Tonto as well. Naruto kept staring at the Tonto. The weapon really was amazing. I'll think of a name during the next days. I don't want to do it half arsed. Besides, I'm getting kinda tired. Naruto yawned. The boy swayed to the dragon and lay down on one of his paws. Thank you for everything, Dad. I love you so much. Igniel stared at Naruto, his heart shattering. I love you too, Naruto. He had to hold his tears back. I'm so sorry, Naruto. The next morning, Naruto woke up. A familiar warmth missing, he opened his eyes and looked around. Igniel was gone. Naruto looked around the cave. Usually Igniel slept in and made Naruto make breakfast. This was weird. Naruto quickly shook of the feeling and looked down. He looked epic in his new clothes. They were even partly orange. He had to thank Igniel once more, he really was the best dad. The ninja went outside the cave and started hunting. With his improved dragon slayer senses he was able to quickly find a rabbit. He prepared it and then cooked it using his flames. Ah, oh, that hit the spot. I'll get some training in and hopefully Igniel will be back by then. So he started training. Naruto had a huge amount of chakra. The Hokage had even told him that he would have more chakra than a cage by the age of 15. Nevertheless Naruto stayed humble and never acted arrogant, unlike a certain Uchiha he knew. Oh he couldn't wait to beat that guy up. As long as he doesn't get placed in a three-man cell with Sasuke, everything would be alright. A large explosion rang through the forest as Naruto destroyed every rock in his sight. Fire dragon's iron fist, he roared smashing his fist into a huge rock. He then spun around and held his fingers in a gun-like fashion and pointed at five small targets. Fire dragon's piercing shot, he shouted, hitting each target in the bullseye. 
Naruto wiped his face, it was completely drenched with sweat. He wore his new clothes, wanting to get used to them. Naruto couldn't stop marveling at his Haori. He really looked epic. There was no way that there would be another shinobi with such cool battle gear. Naruto unsheathed his tanto and swung a couple of times. Hopefully his new sensei would be able to teach him in the ways of the sword. His body shivered from excitement when he thought about dominating all of his enemies with such a beautiful weapon. His thoughts then started traveling to his first mission. Maybe he would need to save a princess or fight a demon king. Haha. <laughs> Naruto chuckled, proudly. I'll beat up anyone that gets in my way, someday he would be a match for Igneal as well. Speaking of Igneal, that bastard still wasn't back yet. Naruto looked at the sky. It was starting to get dark already. Igneal had gone and wasted one of their precious days left. When he would start taking missions, he wouldn't be able to see Igneal that frequently anymore. The ninja went back to the cave and like he thought, Igneal hadn't come back yet. What's that overgrown lizard doing? He pondered. He unsealed a rabbit he had caught earlier and ate it. Naruto took out another scroll and unsealed it as well. Parts of the cave were lit up as a fire appeared. Now for the snack. He said to himself, licking his lips. The boy started inhaling all of the fire and his belly expanded slightly. Ah. Oh. He moaned, wiping his mouth. Nothing beats fire, except for Ichiraku ramen. Naruto then lay down on a sleeping bag and closed his eyes. His last thought being, where the fuck are you, Igneal? The next morning Igneal hadn't been back either. Usually Igneal would tell Naruto when he was going somewhere, something that happened rarely. Having nothing else to do, Naruto went back to training. He had been training for multiple hours when he'd gotten bored. Naruto then remembered that Igneal had told him something about the ultimate Dragon Slayer stage, Dragon Force. Igneal said that very few Dragon Slayers have ever achieved that stage. It was a lot more common thousands of years ago when there were lots of wars between dragons and humans. The boy couldn't quite remember what Dragon Force did to the body, but it sounded awesome. Entering Dragon Force, the user gains the same strength as a dragon for the duration of it. Naruto thought out loud. It was the only thing he managed to recall. Well, he could always ask Igneal when he came back. Deciding he had trained enough in Dragon Slayer magic, he decided to learn the Shunshin no Jutsu. Back in the old academy days, while war raged through the elemental regions, the Shunshin no Jutsu had been a Jutsu necessary for graduation. Naruto knew that these days' standards of graduation had dropped considerably. It was because of a, Konoha had lost a lot shinobi during the Kyubi attack and had to regain its numbers and b. Because there wasn't a lot of tension between the Konoha and the other countries. The Third War was more than 15 years ago. The ninja had read upon the Third War, as he was quite interested about when the Yandaimi Hokage had gained his moniker, Kiroi Senko. To his surprise the Hokage had been quite young when he became AS rank, flee on sight, ninja. Naruto's dream was to surpass that man and make the world recognize his strength just like the Yandaimi had. He was positive that he would be able to achieve it. After all, I'm the only shinobi dragon slayer, he always told himself. After he had read through the basics, Naruto realized that the Shunshin no Jutsu merely required chakra control and lots of training. It was starting to get dark as Naruto finally was able to shunshin ten steps away from his original position. With a bit effort, he might be able to shunshin back to the village in one go, without him stopping. After all he did have the chakra reserves to do so. Naruto had seen Anbu and other Jonin's shunshin before and most perfected the technique that no smoke was released. Naruto was interested in turning his shunshin into the Konoha shunshin, leaving leaves instead of smoke behind. The young shinobi went back to the cave and again, no sign of Igneal. He was starting to get worried. Maybe this was a test? It had to be. Right? With those thoughts he fell asleep, fearing the worst. The next two days passed by quickly. Igneal still hadn't come back. Naruto was starting to get really anxious. Thankfully he met a younger boy, called Konohamaru. Naruto was now Konohamaru's rival and boss. He still didn't know how that worked, but he just shrugged it off. He was lying on the cave floor wondering where Igneal had gone off to. It was just weird, why did he suddenly leave? Naruto tried his best, not to overthink things and fell asleep. Where did you go Igneal? Naruto whispered, holding back his tears, it was the sixth day alone. Tomorrow would be the team assignments, but Naruto had forgotten that. 
Something must have happened to Igniel. But what? Igniel was one of the most powerful beings to have ever existed. He held the same strength as the Kyubi. There would be no way that he was captured. The day went by and Naruto still hadn't moved. The last time he had felt this depressed was when he was younger and hadn't met Igniel yet. He was so confused. Should he be angry at Igniel for suddenly leaving? Should he be concerned for Igniel's safety? Should he feel sad that Igniel had possibly left him? He didn't know. His stomach grumbled. Maybe I should eat something? He yawned. Naruto kun. He suddenly heard an old voice shout. Naruto turned around and was shocked to see the Hokage. What are you doing? Gigi. Have you seen Igniel? Naruto shouted, jumping up and running to his Hokage. The old man was confused. What do you mean Naruto kun? Your team assignment is tomorrow. Why haven't you reported back to me yet? Shit. I almost forgot. Naruto wailed. But Ji Chan. Where is Igniel? Have you seen him? Naruto asked frantically. Igniel? No, I haven't seen him. Why, don't you like his presence and want a refund? The Hokage joked. Naruto looked down. He's gone. I haven't seen him for six days now. He left without saying anything, that bastard. What? Igniel left. The Hokage looked at Naruto shocked. Yes, Gigi. Without notice. He's never done that before. There was no scent either. Just gone. Naruto clenched his teeth. The Hokage stayed quiet before answering. Igniel would never leave you without a reason, Naruto. I know him, he isn't that type of person. Well, dragon. So you're saying he was attacked? Naruto asked him hysterically. Perhaps, but who would be able to win against Igniel? The only person who might be able to pull that off is Uchiha Madara, a man long dead. The Hokage stroked his beard. But, what happened to him? Naruto asked the wise man. I don't know, but I do think that he is fine. We should wait another month to be sure before we assume anything, the Hokage told the genin. Naruto looked down and nodded. What the Hokage said was plausible. If he doesn't show up, I'll just have another goal in life. Finding Igniel and beating him up, Naruto said confidently. The Hokage smiled. A lot of people would kill to have your determination. Anyway, you should come back to Konoha now Naruto. Shall I shunshin us? The Hokage asked the boy. No need Gigi. Thank you for looking for me. Naruto then disappeared into a cloud of smoke. I should have known. Alright Dadbeo, today I'll get assigned to a team, become a kick-ass ninja, find Igniel and then become Hokage. Naruto cheered taking off his sleeping hat. His smile then fell. I miss you Igniel. Naruto went to the kitchen and made himself a toast with some strawberry marmalade. When he finished, he quickly washed the dishes and sunshine to the academy. Arriving in a poof, he surprised some other students standing in front of him. Sorry, he he. He said scratching the back of his head and went inside the building. He was perfectly on time and walked into the classroom as the bell rang. He suddenly heard lots of gasps. He looked to his classmates, who all sat, stood there flabbergasted. Come. What's wrong? He asked them dumbfounded. N Naruto. What happened to your hideous jumpsuit? Sakura and Ino screeched. Huh? I got new clothes. I can see that you idiot, trying to act all cool with new clothes. Don't copy Sasuke, she shouted. Yeah, that idiot just wants to be like Sasuke, Ino agreed. Naruto just stared at the two girls. What's wrong with them? They jealous. Yuha. Naruto sounded confused. Why would I want to look like that brooding emo? Naruto. All girls of the class screamed. He started to ignore them. Shikamaru opened his eyes and looked at Naruto. You gotta say, he does look like a badass. Ah, uh, this is so troublesome. Another girl in the back was red from embarrassment. Naruto kun looks so cool. Sasuke narrowed his eyes at the insult. Shut up, Dobi. Naruto didn't visibly react however he did start raising the temperature of the room. He sat down, comfortably as everyone else started sweating. Damn AC, it's broken again. Uruka swore as he entered the room. All right, everyone sit down. You girls, shut up. The entire class was silent instantly as they took their seats. You will now be assigned a three-man cell with a Jonin sensei and two other students. There will be no complaints, as the team's skills are balanced. The teams are as following. 
Uruka started calling students and assigning them into a team. Team 7. He called out. Everyone's fine but Sasuke and Sakura, but what are the chances that I'm in a cell with either one of them? Naruto thought. Uruka continued. Uzumaki Naruto. Naruto perked up. Haruno Sakura. Both Naruto's and Sakura's heads hit the table. Why with him, her? Both shouted. And Uchiha Sasuke. Yes. Sakura shouted, having forgotten to be on the same team as Naruto. Meanwhile Naruto just blinked. I jinxed it, didn't I? Sasuke kept on scowling as before. They'll just pull me down. The Jonin sensei is Hitaki Kakashi. Uruka said. He then continued on with the other teams. Team 8 was Inazuka Kiba, Aburame Shino and Hayuga Hanada and their sensei being Yuhi Kuranai. Team 10 consisted of Nara Shikamaru, Akamichi Choji and Yamanaka Ino, their sensei being Serutobi Asuma. Team 9 was still in circulation. Uruka then told them their sensei would come and pick them up. Soon enough the first senseis arrived and introduced themselves. Until only Team 7 was left. Their sensei was late. So far, already 2.5 hours. They hoped this wasn't a normal for him. He. Naruto laughed and took out a seal. He designed it for situations like this. It was a trap seal. If someone opened the door he sticks the seal on, around a bucket amount of water would fall out of the seal on the person's head. It was perfect. Naruto what are you doing? Sakura asked confused. If we get in trouble because of you. Sasuke narrowed his eyes, noticing it was a seal of some kind. How does he know sealing? His fault for being late. Naruto said, shrugging. Suddenly a foot stepped into the room and following it a man in standard Jonin attire with a face mask and his forehead protector pulled over his left eye. He opened the door and the seal activated, pouring a huge amount of water on his head, drenching him. No way. Everyone thought screaming in their mind. Naruto started laughing. Meet me on the roof. The soaked Jonin said and shunshined away. Sasuke and Sakura got up and went to the door. Are you coming Naruto? Sakura asked. Damn these clothes are epic, his thoughts were suddenly disturbed as Sakura asked him something. See you guys upstairs, he told them, shun shining away. A pile of leaves took his place. Sakura and Sasuke looked at the pile of leaves shocked. Was that the shunshin no jutsu? Sakura shouted. Sasuke didn't answer and turned around to head for the stairs. I thought he was the dead last? Naruto appeared next to Kakashi snapped around and stared at the boy. Caught you by surprise sensei? Naruto asked teasingly. It's unusual to see academy graduates know the shunshin no jutsu, he told the boy. Wasn't he the dead last? The two waited in silence for Sasuke and Sakura to get to the roof. When the pair arrived Sasuke gave Naruto a nasty glare. Naruto decided to ignore him and waited for his sensei to give them orders. All right you guys, sit down. The three genin sat down on the stairs and looked at their new sensei. All right, we'll start with introductions. Kakashi told them. Even though only his eye was visible, you could clearly see his boredom. Introductions, Sakura asked him. Your likes and dislikes, future dream and hobbies, he shrugged. Why don't you start sensei? Naruto suggested. Kakashi sighed. As you know, my name is Hitaki Kakashi. I like many things, but also dislike a lot as well. I've never really thought my future dream. I guess I have a few hobbies as well. So he only told us his name. Naruto thought, annoyed. I'll go next, he said. My name is Uzumaki Naruto. I like training, my clothes, Igneal, the Hokage and ramen. My dislikes are people who see me as something which isn't me. Kakashi's eyes widened, so he knows. My dream is to become Hokage and find my father, hobbies. I guess training and hunting, he told them. All right Pinky, you're next. Kakashi turned to Sakura. She frowned at the name, but started anyway. My name is Haruno Sakura. My likes are. Who I like is. She looked at Sasuke and looked down shyly. My dislikes are Ino Pig and people who annoy me. She glanced at Naruto. My future dream is, she squealed. We can all guess what your hobby is. You're up, he gestured to Sasuke. My name is Uchiha Sasuke. Sasuke said in an overly dramatic voice. He had his hands folded underneath his nose. I have lots of dislikes, 
but no likes in particular. And I don't have a dream, but an ambition. The ambition to restore my clan and to kill a certain man. What a group. A weird kid I can't read, a fangirl and a kid with revenge issues. Kakashi thought sweat dropping. All right. Now that that's done. Tomorrow we have our first mission. The three perked up at this. It will be survival training, he said. Naruto frowned at this. Usually this is what the academy was for. It couldn't be normal training. But sensei, Sakura started. We already did lots of survival training in the academy. Kakashi started laughing at the naivety of Sakura. This won't be normal training. Like I thought. Naruto nodded. What will it be about? Kakashi started chuckling once more. Of the 27 graduates only a few will actually become ninja. The rest will be sent back to the academy. This survival training is extremely difficult and has a failure rate of 66%. The team's eyes widened. So we aren't actually ninja yet? Naruto looked surprised. He narrowed his eyes. So the graduation exam was only to select those that have the potential of becoming a genin. Kakashi nodded. That's right. Tomorrow morning at 5 your test will start. Meet me at training ground 7. Don't forget to bring your ninja tools, he told them. Naruto looked at the other two. They neither had expected for there to be another test. But it made sense. The graduation test was simply too easy. Oh, and something else before I leave. I recommend you to not eat breakfast. You'll throw up. Kakashi shunshined away. Okay. I'll leave and prepare for tomorrow as well. There's no way I'll fail that test, Naruto thought determinedly. See you guys tomorrow. He shunshined away as well. XX as he appeared in his apartment he sat down in front of the table and started preparing for tomorrow. Naruto decided to bring a few homemade explosive tags, shuriken, kanai, ninja wire, his tonto, and a rabbit or two to eat, just in case. He had to be prepared for everything. He couldn't think of anything else to bring. Naruto got up and went to train his attacks. He decided to stop off at training ground 7 and scouted it for good hiding spots. The day was over in a flash and Naruto was laying in his bed and couldn't fall asleep. He was too excited for tomorrow. We'll probably have to fight Sensei. He thought out loud. A Janin. Well, no use thinking about tomorrow. Who knows what the test will be. Naruto set his alarm and dozed off. Uck. The blonde groaned. He hated his alarm. He sluggishly got up and turned it off. Naruto washed himself and put on himself. Today he would be testing how much protection Igneal's clothes offered. He followed his sensei's advice to not eat anything, but Naruto would still bring two rabbits with him. Of course he didn't want to throw up, however Igneal and Naruto had always eaten a lot for breakfast, which is why he felt like Kakashi sensei's advice was bad. Who would want to fight on an empty stomach? After Naruto gathered all of his tools, he sealed them away and shunshined to training ground 7. He arrived at exactly the same time as the other two, which was a weird coincidence, which he shrugged off. Morning guys. He greeted them with a smile. How can you already be so energetic this early, Naruto? Sakura asked him, yawning. I kinda grew up in the wilderness and did a lot of harsh survival training until I joined you guys in the academy. Even though I hate getting up early it was necessary he told Sakura. Sakura looked at Naruto in shock. Really? That sounds so weird. Sasuke also glanced at Naruto. It seemed like he was hiding something. There was no way he would be dead last when surviving in the wilderness. There was a bit small talk between the three as they waited for their sensei. They must have waited for Kakashi for around one and a half hours now. He still didn't show up. You, Naruto groaned. He's probably going to be three hours late again. And he was correct. Kakashi Shunshine next to them, three hours late. The three kids weren't amused. Next time please don't be late sensei, Naruto said narrowing his eyes. Kakashi waved Naruto off. There was a black cat blocking the way I usually take so I had to go around it and then I saw some old women trying to cross the road with their groceries so I had to help them. Like we'd believe that, Sakura said sweat dropping. All right, let's start the survival training he said as he set an alarm on one of the wood pillars. You have three hours to steal these bells from me. He gestured at two bells on the lower part of the janin vest. Whoever gets a bell becomes a genin. But sensei, Sakura tilted her head, there are only two bells and three of us. Exactly, he answered. 
Only two get to pass. The other goes back to the academy. Their eyes widened. Every one of them had their own reason to become a ninja. Sakura to impress Sasuke and make him fall in love with her. Sasuke to kill a certain person in Naruto, who wanted to make the village acknowledge his existence by becoming Hokage. Their dreams were on the line and one had to give up on his, hers. If both bells aren't stolen until lunchtime in three hours, the person who did the worst will be bound to one of these pillars and be forced to watch the others eat. Kakashi explained. Do not forget, you need to use killing intend. Otherwise you won't win. So that's why he told us not to have breakfast, they realized. But sensei, that's dangerous. Sakura naively said. Kakashi wasn't even going to answer her. But something's fishy. A two-man cell with a Jonin sensei. I've never heard of something like that. Besides, if we're supposed to be a team, why create a rift between us? Naruto mused. Well at least, I brought some food. Time starts, now. Kakashi shouted. All three genin candidates disappeared. All right, they're all hiding well. Kakashi thought, sensing all of them. Naruto hid behind a few bushes, masking his presence. He was easily able to smell Sasuke and Sakura. He looked at Kakashi and noticed that the Jonin had looked at him for an instant. At the others as well. As I thought, it's useless hiding from him. Naruto created a cage bunshin and sent him to Kakashi. The Naruto clone shunshined into the clearing where Kakashi stood. Yo sensei, he greeted. Kakashi sweat dropped. Okay, maybe he is the dead last. All right. Kakashi forgot about me and is distracted by fake me. He probably hasn't realized that I'm not actually there. Naruto thought, his plan working so far. I'm not stupid sensei. I know that you already realized where each of us is hiding. Hiding won't work so I decided to be straightforward. The Naruto clone told Kakashi, smiling cheekily. Kakashi's nodded. That's a first timer. Clone Naruto then threw three kanai at Kakashi. The Jonin caught all of them mid-air and dropped them. That isn't going to work. Kakashi said bored. You think so sensei? Naruto smirked. Kakashi's eyes widened and he jumped away. Where he previously stood a huge explosion rocked the earth. They don't sell these type of explosive tags to Jenin. Where did you get them? He asked. Whoever bought them for him needs a D rank for three months punishment. What do you mean sensei? I made them myself. Naruto asked, tilting his head. That's right. He used a seal for pranking me yesterday. He's already that adept. Kakashi thought, amazed. Usually ninja only start learning basic sealing as Chunin and Naruto could already make good explosive tags. Naruto's clone rushed in, going for close combat. After a few blocks, Kakashi got bored and decided to teach him a lesson. Kakashi simply caught clone Naruto's fist, turned around, lifted Naruto up and smashed Naruto into the ground. To his surprise, he exploded into a cloud of smoke. Cage Bunshin? He asked surprised. He immediately tried sensing Naruto but he was gone. He felt a buildup of chakra behind him and spun around. Naruto appeared with a shunshin, hands lit with fire. Kakashi had never been that surprised before. Fire Dragon's Iron Fist. The real Naruto roared and smashed his flaming fist into Kakashi. However unlike Mizuki, he managed to overcome his surprise. Kakashi had replaced himself with a log. And Naruto, what was that? If I hadn't replaced myself, I'd probably have a few bruises. Hey, Naruto chuckled. He knew what to answer, he and the Hokage had already talked about this for years. My Kekai Jenke, of course. Kakashi looked flabbergasted. You have a Kekai Jenke? What? That Dobi has a Kekai Jenke. Why isn't my Sharingan unlocked yet? Sasuke cursed. Meanwhile Sakura was flabbergasted as well. There is no way he has a Kekai Jenke like Sasuke-kun, he must be lying. Naruto didn't give Kakashi time to recover and shot himself at him with his hands on fire, as thrusters. Fire Dragon's Iron Fist. He roared once more. Unlike the first time, Kakashi was barely able to dodge and step to the right just in time. Deciding it was a bad idea to grip Naruto's flaming hands, he went in for a punch. Naruto seeing this as an opening, was unable to dodge, but shouted. Fire Dragon's eruption. He concentrated a huge amount of magic on every cell on his body before he let it burst. A huge fiery explosion enveloped the area. 
Kakashi who was just centimeters away from hitting Naruto was blown back. Fuck, fuck, fuck. I really need to take him more seriously. I should have expected that. Kakashi cursed under his breath as he hit the ground. He checked his body for any injuries, finding only a few burns. Thank Kami I managed to jump back in time. Mostly only the blast hit me. It's called, Karyu, at least for now. Officially I'm the first person from my family to have the Karyu. Naruto told Kakashi. Kakashi stayed calm on the outside, but was shocked on the in inside, so you know your parents? My parents? Nope, don't know who they are. The Hokage simply said that someone else having such a strong Kekai Jenke would be known. Kakashi nodded. It was powerful. Suddenly the Jonin felt something behind him. He spun around and delivered a kick to the person. It erupted into smoke. Close call. He heard Naruto say. Naruto lit his hands once more and speeded towards Kakashi. Chunin level speed, Chunin level strength. How much was he hiding at the academy? He only lacks experience. Kakashi decided to take him seriously. Well, at least as serious as he can be, without the Sharingan. He quickly got into a standard fighting stance and intercepted Naruto's attempt to hit him. While Kakashi's one hand was busy, Naruto tried punching Kakashi in the stomach with his other flaming hand. To his surprise the Jonin easily caught the punch. Kakashi immediately lifted his right knee and smashed it into Naruto's unguarded stomach. The boy spit out blood in surprise and stumbled back as Kakashi let him go. Damn, he really isn't holding back. I shouldn't get to cocky. Naruto quickly created 20 clones to encircle Kakashi. He needed to get the bell. How come only the original has flaming arms? Is it possible that the Kekai Jenke doesn't work on clones? I'll have to keep an eye out for that. Kakashi realized. Uncount to him, he was actually correct. Since Cage Bunshin are clones made of chakra, they can't copy the magic container, like the original has. It is impossible for the entirely made of chakra, clones to use magic. Naruto's clones all took out Kanai as they charged Kakashi. The Jonin took out his own Kanai and started tearing apart the clones. Naruto quickly created more clones as his others held Kakashi busy. Naruto had learned the Gokaku no Jutsu and other lower ranking fire Jutsu as substitutes for his clones not being able to bend fire like he was. The five new clones all went through the hand signs within seconds and released huge fireballs. Kakashi sensed a rather big buildup of chakra when he quickly finished of the last clone. He turned around to see five fireballs heading straight for him. Their combined heat was almost as hot as Naruto's Dragon Slayer attacks. He immediately performed a sealless Kawarimi with a conveniently placed log near him. He realized his mistake just as it was too late. Kakashi appeared where the log had previously been and suddenly Naruto jumped down from a tree next to him. He wasn't able to turn in time as he felt someone touch the bells. Having no other choice, the Jonin used a lightning technique and electrified his entire body. Ah! He heard Naruto yell in pain, he quickly jumped away from Naruto and realized he still had both bells. A second later and Naruto would have gotten one. I can't believe he didn't even get the real meaning behind this test but was still able to almost get a bell. Kakashi looked slightly nervous underneath his mask. That kid was going to be a monster in a few years. He quickly shunshined away. That Naruto, he even knows the Gokaku no Jutsu, She, if he can do that, I'll be easily able to beat Kakashi. Sasuke sneered arrogantly, he quickly went to find Kakashi. Fuck. Naruto moaned as he got up. His entire body was shaking from that electric shock. There is literally no way to beat a Jonin as I am now. I still have a few other stronger attacks up my sleeve but they probably won't work either. He mused. Something is off. He can't expect Green Genin to beat him and get those bells. Plus, there are only two bells. If we are supposed to be a team, why create a rift between us? Naruto blinked, then again. Are we really this stupid? He's doing this on purpose. Kakashi wants us to fight him together even though one of us won't be able to graduate. He summed up. But I've never heard of a team with only two Genin in the entire Shinobi history. So that's part of the trick as well. He managed to get his body to stop shaking and started sniffing the air. So, Sasuke is fighting Kakashi and Sakura seems to be not moving. Better hurry up and go help Sakura. Naruto keep jumping from tree to tree when Sakura's scent suddenly stopped. 
He looked down and saw her lying on the ground, rubbing her head. Sakura, Naruto said indifferently. Sakura's head immediately snapped towards the tree. Naruto jumped down. Naruto. She started. She had so many questions for the body. Don't worry I'll tell you guys everything later on. I figured out Kakashi's test. Naruto said, sitting down in front of her. Sakura looked at him, puzzled. You probably saw my battle with Kakashi, he started. She nodded so he continued on. There is no way a freshly minted genin can steal those bells from a janin. An elite janin at that. So you're basically saying that all of us will fail? Sakura narrowed her eyes at him. Yes, if that were the main objective of the test. What do you mean, what other objective is there? Sakura asked, tilting her head. Look at it. A janin tells three genin to steal two bells from him. Obviously one genin will fail. Because of that a rift appears in the team and they start trying to get the bell themselves. Naruto explained. Sakura's eyes widened. So he's making us work on our own, even though we're supposed to be a team. Exactly. No wonder you were the smartest Kunoichi. He praised. Besides, I've never heard of a Janin sensei with only two genin. Sakura nodded, she neither had ever heard of something like that. We should get going. Sasuke finished battling Kakashi. It looks like he lost, he said, standing up. What? Sasuke kun lost? Sakura exclaimed as Naruto rolled his eyes. We just talked about that. There is no way a genin, no matter how gifted, could win against a janin. Naruto said annoyed. I better not tell her that I'm stronger than that damn Uchiha. She might refuse working with me then. Sakura remained quiet. Okay. I'll need your help convincing Sasuke. He doesn't like me and would probably only listen to you. Naruto told her as he started running. Sakura quickly caught up to Naruto. Why do you think Sasuke kun would listen to me? She questioned. Naruto turned to her. You're the smartest girl in class. That's better than the class, Dobi, telling him. Sakura blushed slightly. Oh, how did you manage to tell that Sasuke was battling Kakashi and lost? Naruto simply pointed at his nose. I smelled them. Sakura just blinked at him but didn't question it any further. We'll arrive soon. Naruto told her. Look, that's him over there. Well, at least his head. Sakura saw this as well and started screaming. Naruto quickly covered her mouth and shook her. Oi, stay with us. Sasuke simply blinked at them. What are those idiots doing? Sakura regained her composure and looked at Sasuke's head. She started telling Sasuke at what they thought was the main objective of the test, while Naruto created some clones to free Sasuke from his earth prison. Sasuke didn't say thanks as he finally got up but nodded at Sakura. It sounded plausible to him. I hope this works, he said narrowing his eyes. So, what's the plan? An. If anyone is wondering why Sasuke is so nice right now, I started re-watching Naruto and realized that Sasuke was only arrogant back then. He only started getting dark when he was offered power by Orochimaru. Rewatch the series, you'll realize it yourself. This time Naruto started talking. Thanks to my good sense of smell I can smell Sensei's location. Sasuke looked away at this. He was jealous of Naruto's good fight against Kakashi. The blonde was stronger than him which annoyed him, something he'd never admit to others, but he did start respecting him. Naruto saw Sasuke's expression and slightly smiled. The raven-haired boy wasn't brooding as usual. Sensei's in that direction, around a kilometer away. The other two nodded and started running. Naruto quickly followed as well and remained in front, so that he could navigate them. All right. Sasuke, you and me will fight Sensei. Hopefully together we will be able to corner him. I'll create a shadow clone which will look like Sakura. The clone will throw projectiles at Sensei and hopefully make him think it's you. In battle I will most likely create some more clones so he won't focus on the woods near him. Naruto explained as he then looked at Sakura. Sakura, you will wait for the perfect moment to go in and steal the bells. The Uchiha grunted at the plan. It wasn't the best, but the best that they would be able to come up with in such short time. It was nearing lunchtime. Sasuke, Naruto said, catching Sasuke's attention. If you ever get the chance to fire a Gokaku know just you at Sensei. Don't hesitate. Even if I'm next to him. The blonde then made a small fire in his hand. I'm resistant to pretty much every type of fire. It won't hurt me. 
Sasuke was about to answer when suddenly Naruto created a clone and hanged it into Sakura. Let's go, Team 7. Kakashi thought the three soon to be Genin had given up and he took out his book. Nothing beat Icha Icha. Nothing. He suddenly had to dodge though as a well placed kanai whizzed past his head. He turned around and was prepared to fight an army of Naruto's when he suddenly saw two other people instead of only Naruto. No way. They actually got the secret meaning of this test. Kakashi thought surprised. We're going to beat you up. Naruto smirked. The other two nodding in agreement. Let's see you beat us all at the same time. Sasuke agreed. The end. Thanks for watching. Also remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.